fabulous setting this week. Royal Liverpool Golf Club, known as Hoylake. To those who know it best, and we're returning here for the first time since 2014. But we've already had some great moments this week. Welcome back to Live at the Range. And as you can see, it's it's Drich Insi, Insi <laughs> Memnet alongside me. I mean, it's not quite what we're looking for during Open Week, but it is what it is, Insi. Great to mm. see you here. How are you doing today? Do you know what? I think I'm going to get a very strong right hand holding this umbrella up because it's quite help you. crazy out here. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, yes, it's raining, but the course is looking absolutely lush. Uh, went out there to have a look at a few holes and I think, you know, overall the vibes are good, the players are happy, it's looking absolutely immaculate. So you, you obviously haven't been here before, it's the first time we're returning here in terms of the Open since 2014. So mm. tell us more about your first impressions, Incy, and what you were observing out there in this Open Championship venue. Yeah, no, it's it's a great golf course, obviously. Um, I was speaking to Matt Jordan, who's a local here. He's going to get plenty of support out on the golf course. But it's been really interesting. It's taken me a good minute and a half, you know, when I'm standing on the tee boxes to figure out how to play each hole because quite often you've got humps and hollows and the rough that really come into play and you can't see all, all of the all golf, of the golf course. course. Um, so all in all, you know, visually it's quite intimidating mm -hmm. um, and there's always a lot more room than you think, but you've got to be so disciplined out here. You know, when Tiger Woods won him back in 2006, he only hit one drive. So you've got to be really quite strategic with where you place the golf ball and, you know, how you play it. Now, Insi, I came here a few weeks ago to play the golf course with mm. James Bledge, the Lynx manager, who has done an amazing job of putting this course together uh, for this year. And it's quite an interesting experience. I don't know if you've been to the, what the players this week will play as the third hole, mm -hmm. which is normally the member's first hole. Mm -hmm. And it's very unusual because on that hole, there's an internal out of bounds down the right-hand side, mm. the clubhouse down the left-hand side. Mm. So it's a really, really intimidating hole. Did you manage to have a look at it? No, because I've walked the back nine. The back nine. But I actually wanted to ask you about the back okay, nine. Okay, well, because I can you tell you about it. The 17th. Yeah. Oh, well, let's jump to that first. So the 17th, obviously, brand new hole this year. Mm. And, you know, it's the newest hole in an open, in, a, in, an, in the open, which is really, really exciting. Par mm. three, um, Martin Newbert design. And it's, I mean, it's a quirky wee Lynx hole, Incy. And I think it's a cracker, to be honest. Mm. You know, I love short par threes. I don't know about Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's one of those things, you know, this poster stamp hole, for example, is mm. at Truin is one of the best. And it just proves it doesn't need to be the longest hole ever for it to be a good hole because from what I understand the, the green is elevated you've got that killer bunker on the right hand side as well you've got runoff areas on the left and you know if the wind picks up it's going to be really challenging obviously with a shorter club in hand that ball flight is going to go higher mm. and if, it, if like I said if the wind picks up it's going to be really challenging to control that ball flight and that spin and actually to just hit the dance floor, to hit the green, is, yeah. is going to be difficult. Mm. So I played it from a slightly forward tee. It was just less than 100 yards. The, the guys this week obviously will be playing it from around 136 yards. Mm -hmm. And one of the most exciting things about it is you hit it, obviously you're playing to an elevated green, as you reference, and you get it in the air. The, you, you can't really see where the ball's landed and finished. Mm -hmm. So there's this walk of anticipation as you're, you're walking up. <laughs> obviously, if you've... If, you've aimed for the centre of the green, you're hoping everything's all right. But if mm. you've seen it leaking a little bit to the left or a little bit yeah. to the right, huge runoffs and some enormous bunkers, huge false front <laughs> at the start of the green. And on the bottom of that false front is one of the biggest bunkers I have ever seen mm. in my life. It's got the biggest face on it. And listen, Incy, the first time I played the hole, I was pretty happy that I made a four. Did you? Uh, yeah, I, I hit it in the bunker on the right-hand side. It was on a downslope. I thought, well, this is this is this is the snowman all day. I thought I was looking at an eight. <laughs> Walked out with a four. We actually went back in the evening because we couldn't get enough, and we played another few holes. And and the, the next time around, I, I made a seven. So. Um, oh, we'll, we will forget about that. That's fine. <laughs> but the thing about the bunkers, because you've got those revetted faces, it's actually quite flat if you look at the bottom of them. So let's say you end up in a bunker, the ball could very easily run up to very close to the revetted face, and you're yeah. literally left with a vertical shot up. And then if you've got a 40, 50 yard shot, there's, there's no way of you getting near 
the, mm. the flags yeah. because you need to get that ball up in the air so you've got no momentum for it to go forwards. It's mm. going to be really challenging. No, and a really good point there, Incy. When I was playing with James Bledge, the Lynx manager, and he was telling me all about the, the course preparation, things they've done, a new bunker on the opening hole, for example, in the dog leg, but he was also telling me a little bit about how they rake the bunkers differently this week to how they do in a standard week for the members. I didn't know this, but there is such a thing as a member's rake, yeah. and that the way you move the sand when you're raking it for a member in a, in a normal week here at Hoylake encourages the ball to fall to the middle of the bunker so you've got a good chance of getting it out perhaps a good look at the green if it's a mm. fairy bunker when it comes to open championship week they're not going to be so friendly what they do <laughs> is they rake it in a different way which does not encourage the ball to roll to the middle and in fact you'll see you know pl players uh, really really potentially with some ugly ugly lies and he referenced that on the the new bunker that's been put in the dog leg of the opening hole and you know previously if it had gone in there and, it, and, and the ball's just landing in the middle, then you're John Rams and such like. They're just taking the green on all mm. day long. But when it's been raked the way it has, mm. you might be seeing something totally different. So it makes it really exciting. And obviously, yeah. the precision element off the tee is really, really rewarded and mm -hmm. severely punished if you do find mm. yourself out of position. Absolutely. I mean, just walking out there, there's some holes where the further down you go, basically, the tighter it gets. And I was looking at the rough initially, I thought, it's actually not that bad. And I don't know what it was like for you when you played. But we've got to take into consideration it's raining a lot and that makes that rough a lot heavier and thicker uh, making it really difficult to get a club through so initially i thought okay it doesn't look too bad it's not your classic open uh, links rough um, out there but all in all I thought actually with the amount of rain we've had it's going to be very heavy indeed mm. Mm. well for now I mean it's here going to huddle under this umbrella and we're going to head to George who's got a very special guest in the locker room <laughs> Now you talk about behind scenes footage, we can't get more behind scenes than this. We're very lucky to be in the players locker room. And look who's joined me, Colin Morikawa. Thanks for letting us in, mate. Before we go in, how cool is it to see that sign as a champion's corner? It's amazing. I mean, just to know the history, you know, obviously there's not too many guys still playing, but the history that's on that Clara Jug, uh, it means the world. Really well, is. as I look out here, you haven't spent much time out here because it was your first open and you're straight into the corner. Pretty crazy, I wasn't mean, it? Look who's waiting right here. We got we got Francesco waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting to get in the locker. We'll let him go. Come on, Franny. Yeah, get in here. See, I, I, unless someone has a last name between us, we're going to be sharing lock. We're going to be sharing lockers here for for a long, time. For a long, long time. How do you feel about that, Franny? For a long time. Yeah, I'm happy. Happy to be next to Colin. It's I mean, a, a nice spot. Than, I mean, you're a lot older than me. You know? it's okay. <laughs> All right, well, let's... Always, always a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's follow him in there. As we walk around, Colin, there's some superb names. Please have a seat. Oh, sure, Relax. Oh. oh, look, John Daly, Ernie Owls. Andre. Yeah, the nice, the nice ones are the ones that have multiple numbers. On a them. couple of multiple numbers. What, what was, is that the next goal, That's is what it? what you want, yeah. This entire, this entire row, I think, only has one. Uh, so we got some work to do, but yeah, we, we want to add another number like Padre right there nice. over back to back. That's impressive. How truly special is it to be a part of history, not just any history, but the Open Championship history? It goes so deep into the game of golf, doesn't I mean, it? It's, it's the home of golf. You know, you, you have everything here. You have every name possible you can think of pretty much on that Open Championship trophy. And that's what you want to join. You know, you want to be a part of that and you, and you feel that in here. Um, it's very, very special to be in this in this corner is what they call it even though it moves every year um, to know that your name's always going to be there can't take it off how's life changed for you since Royal St George's it was such a special week wasn't it yeah it really was uh, a lot of opportunities uh, it's been a lot of fun um, but we want it back you know I heard what Cam Smith said about telling his mates you know that he wants it back in a week uh, you know I wanted it last year as well and I just didn't play well, but I definitely want it back. You know, you want to be able to bring that Claire Jug around everywhere you go, show it off to people. It's one of the best. It is one. It is the best trophy I think in uh, in professional golf and in sports in general because it is just it's the perfect size to do anything with it. <laughs> Fantastic. And now that you're here at Royal Liverpool, let's talk about this week. How's it all looking out there? Your thoughts on the course and how excited are you for this 151st Open? Uh, it's a fantastic golf course. Um, a lot of it's right in front of you. Um, there's going to be a lot of, of variability based on what the wind is doing or the weather for what you're going to do off the tees. I mean, you can take three irons to driver uh, to three wood um, on many holes out there. I mean, so there's a lot of different strategies. I'm sticking with the strategy my, my caddy and I are coming up with to hopefully yield a lot of birdies and not too many bogeys. So we'll see how it pays off at the end of the week. But um, I, I think it's a good game plan for us and, and the way I play golf um, to just kind of 
put it out there, stay away from the bunkers like Tiger did in 06 and uh, see if it pays off. Nice. Well, Colin, we look forward to watching you this week. All the best of luck. And maybe we might get another year engraved on that locker. I, I hope so. I really hope so. Thank All you. Right. Cheers, All right. Appreciate it. Well, one of the best things about being down on the range, apart from the atmosphere and energy, which mm. is just fantastic, you get to have a stroll up and down and see who's coming in, even on a day like this. And see, I thought that the players perhaps might be inside having a cup of tea and maybe waiting for this rain to stop. But... Nah, not for the world's best. And we've got defending champ over there as well, worth pointing out. Cameron yeah. Smith just, just arrived and going through the motions. I'm not sure if he's already played or not, but definitely fancying his chances this week. Yeah, he's been in some good form and... It's great to see him back again, still rocking the mullet, and he <laughs> is a fan favourite. He's one of these guys that's just cool as a cucumber. I feel like the mullet situation isn't going to change. I mean, we've got some young guns out on tour, Ewan Ferguson and also Mimu Lee rocking that mullet too, so it's definitely a thing. I know, I know, mm. it is a thing. There's Laurie Cantor, good to see him as well. I can't see Victor Perez rocking a mullet, I must be honest. <laughs> He's got that kind of uh, classy vibe going on. Very smart, well put together, very tall, athletic figure of mm. Victor Perez. Uh, this has got to be a driving iron, I would have thought. He's teeing it up, so probably working on that kind of flighted down shot. Let's just watch and admire. So much, uh, such an important part of the game this week, the, the driving irons and being able to keep the ball low if, if the winds do pick up. Victor Perez had Fanny Sonnison on his bag mm. a few weeks ago in, see, in Germany who obviously knows her way around an Open Championship. Bosh, that's going to be a handy shot for sure. Beautiful. OK, well, this is Dan Hilliard, just recently a winner at the Betfred British Masters, the man from New Zealand. Great to see him doing so well. He just had the most unbelievable finish as well. I mean, it looked like at one point no one wanted to win the tournament, and he just pops up and goes, eagle, birdie, eagle. Said, hello, I'm here to play. Yeah, great, great <laughs> young talent. I actually... I was interviewing Max Homer and Ricky Fowler last week in the Scottish Open and they were playing alongside Dan Hillier and Ricky, referencing how pleased he was to see Dan Hillier winning, which was really nice. It's so nice when you see the, the PGA Tour guys appreciating the talent we have on the DP World Tour. Absolutely. I mean, they're all mates out on tour and they all support each other. I mean, the atmosphere on the final hole was just incredible. Had a wonderful amateur career, Dan Hillier, and now here he is as a winner a professional winner on tour and he's in bay number five we're hitting into a bit of a headwind here at the moment and also important just to be practicing with the waterproof and the layers on because obviously out on course it's going to restrict your takeaway yeah. and so it's worth noting i'm not going to be able to rotate as far back it's going to you know take a bit of speed off it probably probably taking off a few yards as well so important to still get calibrated with the launch monitors and the effects that that can have See one of the, the club reps has come down here just to have a look at the bag set up. And that's another really important part, making sure the bag and the, the way it's set up for links is so different to, mm. to what you're looking at in terms of these courses they see in America. And we've already talked about the driving irons, but what other sort of um, changes do you think NC they'll be making to the bags this week? Well, you get a bunch of players probably rocking up this week with know maybe 16 17 clubs in the bag and they'll play around with what works and what doesn't and like you mentioned there you've got the tour trucks available and the players can manipulate their clubs you know maybe take a couple of degrees off their driver perhaps or I don't know take the five wood out and just put a driving iron in and there's all sorts that you can do mm. so, and of course just get me new grips as well mm. making sure it's nice and tacky for rainy conditions yeah, and of course at the bottom end of the bag you've got the wedges and playing around with the bounce because this mm. turf's so tight. Although with all this rain it does feel a little bit softer underfoot at the moment, but that's something else they look at, don't they? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I was out on the golf course and seeing, you know, especially Tom Kim, actually hitting a lot of chip shots around the greens. And typically on a Lynx course, yes, you've got that option to use the flat stick, but because it's so lush and green, it actually sits up and it's absolutely perfect uh, to just get a wedge on it and you can gauge a lot of spin as well. So we'll probably see a good mixture of both I'd imagine. We're just watching Dan Hillier hit, hit one more shot and then we'll take a, a wander along to bay number three. Let's see what he's going to do here and see. Flush it. Oof. <laughs> it's a beautiful looking golf swing. That's on a frozen rope that's not moved left or right at all. Yeah. Well, we will leave them in peace as they tweak things. This to is bay fun. number three. 
Now, there's a lot going on here. We've got Robert Rock, coach to Francesca Molinari. I always thought it was amazing, especially with Robert Rock being the player that he was, but also the coach. It must have always been quite difficult to do a bit of both, but now he's really sticking into coaching duties. Yeah, he's, he's managed to step away from the playing side. He still plays a little bit, but into the coaching side. He's a man in demand, Robert Rock. Well, interesting, because Dennis Pugh uh, was Franco's coach. So I don't know if it's an addition or a replacement. He's done a lot of work since he won at Carnoustie, obviously. Molinari, never forget that. Final few holes, Tiger Woods was in the mix there. He knows what he's doing around the links mm. course, Molinari, but he's done so much work, especially on the distance. You see, I remember watching him for hours and see working on this sort of drill where he was really jumping, using the lower body to try and get more distance. Mm. But this looks like he's working on something perhaps a little bit more precise to do with keeping the head still. Robert Rock was holding his head and... Well, especially in conditions like this, it's so important to stay centred. You know, on the way back and through, if you've got a lot of lateral movement, it's going to be very difficult to keep that flight down and get that strike that you need. And obviously behind him right now is his mini entourage. You've got Rob Gold up as well, who actually used to be my old trainer, and he's one of the best in the industry. He's been working with Franco for forever, for all I remember. So what sorts of things will they be working on together? So plenty of things. A lot of dynamic movement, I would have thought. And, you know, before the, the round, it's so important to warm up that body properly. And it also helps the mentality. You know, not only are you physically warming up, but you're also getting that head in gear and making sure that you're ready for the physical warm-up out on the drive range too. Let's watch him hit another one. What do you think he's doing here with his head, Incy? I'd love to ask Robert Rock, but it looks like he's not trying to do too much on the way back and trying to stay centred. Trying to avoid the lateral movement. Making sure you stay there and cover the ball on the way through. It's simple, really, and it always is. I was speaking to Dad Bradbury in the short game area earlier, and I said, what are you working on? It's always, it always comes down to the basics. You don't want to change too much, especially in a major week like this. You're not looking to transform your game. Mm -hmm. You're here to make some fine tweaks and basically just do an MOT check, won't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just see if we can wander back to bay number five in just a moment. Dan Hillier is up to. This rain has been absolutely non-stop. Relentless, <laughs> isn't it? It's wet rain, into That's what we'd call this. Do you know what wet rain is? Talk to me. <laughs> In Scotland, we have a saying which is wet rain, and it means the kind of rain that goes right through you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you just come over with this way, we're going to have a little a little chat with Dan Dan Hillier. We're going to have a little umbrella battle, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Should we all come down together? This here is we nice. are. Yeah. Come under our brawly here, oh, Dan. Beautiful. Dan, it's great to see you. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Obviously, um, yeah, had a nice relaxing day yesterday. Obviously, been a big few weeks. So, uh, yeah, um, obviously not great out here today, but still getting some work done. So, that's good. It has been a big couple of weeks. We're still absolutely buzzing from your victory at the Betfred British Masters. <laughs> how, how were the celebrations? Yeah, we, we celebrated. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, so it was uh, it was probably a good thing. I decided to take Denmark off and just sort of, mm. you know, give myself some time to soak it all in. Um, yeah, obviously didn't really think it was going to be happening the way it did and for it to happen, yeah, so quickly, it was pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, definitely took some time to digest it all. And, and how was last week for you in Scotland? It was great. Um, obviously a good, uh, good preparation for this week and yeah, played pretty solid the first couple of days. Just Saturday was a bit, um, went a bit AWOL. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's golf. Not every day is going to be perfect. But um, yeah, still a lot of good stuff in there. So happy. And, and how does it feel on a week like this, Dan, where you're, you know, the best players in the world are here. It's the Open Championship. I mean, there's, there's nothing quite like it in golf. Do you walk around and just kind of think, I've made it. Like, look at me. Look at my life. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's pretty crazy, obviously, like growing up, dreaming of, you know, competing against the best players in the world. And, uh, yeah, to be out here doing it's pretty special. And, um, yeah, obviously, got to pinch myself every now and then. But uh, at the same time, you know, I feel like my game's in a pretty good spot. So I'm here to compete and just got to focus on, on the job at hand. And just finally, uh, what about the course? How, how is that suiting your eye so far? 
Yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting one. Obviously, with um, yeah, some of the way the holes are designed with the OB cut right against the fairway and all that sort of stuff. It's yeah, um, just a few holes you got to watch out for. But I think overall, it's you know, same with most links golf courses. It, it suits uh, someone that can fly the ball well and uh, has all the shots in the bag. So, I feel like yeah, tee to green, you got to be pretty strong. And then obviously, if you keep it out of those fairway bunkers, you got a pretty good chance. <laughs> good stuff, Dan. Great to chat to you, and we wish you the best for this week. We'll be keeping our eye yeah, out. So well much. done again. Umbrellaless. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fabulous. It's such a lovely young talent, Dan Hillier, and just fabulous mm. to see him winning, as he rightly deserves to, with the game he's got. And definitely one to watch out for this this weekend, see, because he strikes the ball just beautifully. He really does, and he's been lingering for quite a while. I remember interviewing him earlier in the season, he's been playing well. But it's one of those things, a win can do so much for you. You know, it can give that confidence boost that you've always needed to know that you can get the job done, and it'll be amazing to see how he propels forwards after that. Mm. Very interesting. OK, right, let's just take a wee saunter down here. Me and Incy, we're going to continue to huddle under this umbrella and we'll be back in just a moment. See you in a bit. We're told that the weather forecast for today is kind early on for the possibility of some wet weather later. I think Mother Nature kicks it up another notch. Quite extraordinary. What a moment. Welcome back to Live at the Range on a wet Tuesday here at Royal Liverpool. A lot different to yesterday. Yesterday afternoon it was nice, but the fun never stops at the range. Look at all those divots, all the wet, muddy divots. There's Inti and uh, Iona just drying off, I think, for the next few minutes. All these players, all hard at work. Ali, a, a lot different these conditions for them. I mean, the caddies as well, a, a hard job for them today too. It's been relentless, absolutely relentless. So two things that are good about this weather, that it's still mild enough, check, <laughs> and there's no wind. So it's actually like you almost settle into it because it's quite consistent as well. It's, uh, it's, it sounds strange to say, but it's not the worst walk out there right now. It could, could be okay. worse, <laughs> could be worse. Uh, Cam Smith's mullet is definitely getting a, a bit of a soaking at the moment um it, it's, i think it's better than last year i reckon that hair. happened to me earlier on oh, out there yeah <laughs> you know went out without the hat and then the, the mullet kind of just turns into strands and but he can pull off anything yeah he can, he can. He yeah can. um uh, what was interesting what he said yesterday ali is that i mean obviously he's defending he thinks his long game is now in a much much better shape than it was for quite a time considering the strength of his short game he now has to be one of the favourites heading into this week. Especially given this isn't necessarily, like, it's a ball striker's golf course, but it's not necessarily a long hitter's golf course. So you need to be in control of your golf ball at, at Hoy Lake. That is always kind of the, the MO. So that's why you look at players coming in with form. You, you look at people that have played well, you know, especially at the Scottish Open last week. Um, that's going to be, I think, yet again, a bit of an indicator of performance here this week. You know, eight of the last 12 Open champions have warmed up at the Scottish. So there's a, there's a definite theme there. But for Cam... The, the thing about Cam is that it, he likes having the time to work on his game. And he's had that. You know, that was kind of by design with the choices that he's made in the last 12 months. But he's actually had time to craft it properly. And sometimes that gets a little bit left behind in, you know, week on, week on um, tour life. So, yeah, mix that with a short game, tidy long game. Watch that space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you, know, you know Cam quite well. Do you think he'll want the wind to pump a little bit more here Thursday, Friday? Or do you think he'll prefer the calmer conditions? Uh, well, good players always want the wind to go. 
So if you're a good player, you want the conditions to be tough because that weeds out half the field straight away. And majors kind of, you know, to, to fold back onto what Brooks kept through, has said the last five years plus of, um, of his majors, there is a mentality where you go, oh, I've got, only got to beat 20 or 30% of guys. And, you know, there's guys out there that, you know, are gonna, they're going to have a day. They're going to shoot up the leaderboard is whether you can stay there. And that's where class is absolutely permanent on that front. Um, I would be surprised given the way the golf course is set up, given the conditions we're expecting, given where golf is at at the moment, if it, if it was kind of a bit of a random winner mm. this year. Okay, I mean, you mentioned the course set up there. You went out, walked all 18 this morning, yes. braved the conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of the setup of Royal Liverpool this year? It's cool. Uh, yeah, there's, you think about the, the pictures you see on social media, right? Of, the 17th it's way more extreme it's absolutely <laughs> way, it's way more extreme than you think like i've i looked at it to prep coming in here and i walked out out and i was walking around with um patrick cantley and xander shuffley and and um patrick's coach jamie mulligan who's one of the best people on the planet and who i've known for some time and we go out and we look at it and i'll go oh, okay and, and pat hit like a little baby nine iron out there but there's only one place you can miss miss it on 17. 18 with OB down the right, three with OB down the right. Like, you cannot believe how close it is. You actually have to see it to believe it. And I know that that sounds, you know, a bit cliche to say, but that's, that is absolutely the, the reality. And so that's where the placement for someone like Cam Smith comes into it. Um, being able to plot your way around this golf course that is lush, it's not, the fairways aren't as fast. It's very green, isn't it, as well? People who haven't seen it, it's extremely green. Yeah, and one of the things that I've noticed, I was looking at the rough when I was out there, and the the grass is like the fescue is long but it's it hasn't had the rain in the last couple of months it has in the last three weeks it's been quite quite wet but in the lead up to it it was quite dry so the kind of the canopy of the grass at the bottom of the fescue isn't as thick as it could be um, and there's a couple of really lush parts around the greens instead but the the actual long rough you know you can get the ball back at play i i didn't see too many spots that you wouldn't be able to do that um, just as my kind of my appraisal and my thought process while I was out there but gosh it's fun to go and watch yeah it and is, go yeah. and have a little look around <laughs> and get to know the place <laughs> yeah um so yeah, Cam Smith just there with with a few layers on as well go on Ali just watch how tidy his golf swing is here. This is one of the things, it's almost like his, his sternum just moves, his arms are a byproduct. It's something he's been always been very exceptional at. It's kind of the idea of... There's not much effort there. There's not. No. And, and he uses his big muscles really, really well. And that's where, you know, the kind of the lack of speed. You, th you think about someone like Pyro Carrington, who <laughs> says that 80% of your speed's in your hands. You know, so he literally whips through the ball. He's been practicing it so much. Um, but there's so little of that with Cam because he's a control game kind of guy. He, you know, he's a short game guru, incredible putter. But could get out of, like, he could get get up and down off, you know, the, the back porch of some of the houses surrounding this place. You know, and to be fair, we've seen that in the opens over the years. You, know, you think about Jordan Spieth and some of the things that he's done. But... There's um, a lot of runoffs on these greens as well uh, around Hoy Lake. Quite some, some of them pretty severe as well. So sh short game has got to be on point this week. And also shot decision, you know, and, you, and your, your choice making around the greens and what repertoire you have. It's amazing how many guys that come over and they see the lush grass and they naturally, they just go straight for their wedges because they can. And so that's where the setup of the course kind of dictates um, how, well, obviously how you play it, but it it almost takes some of the decision out of it, which I think is mentally it's easier because, you know, you just, you, it's, it's an automatic grab. Um, but Cam can play high, low, like he, he could get up and down with every club in his bag from almost any spot, <laughs> which to be fair, you might need to this week. Yeah, you might work. Uh, what about the greens as well? What about the green complexes here at Royal Liverpool? They're, they're not the slopiest from what I've, I've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, there's there's kind of some little plateaus. There's also uh, there's a lot of mounding that that might actually help you. Kind of like there's a couple of valleys. I'm thinking back to a few of the opening holes uh, in particular. One's a great little green where it starts on a higher plateau and then it's quite long and narrow and kind of feeds its way towards the back edge a little bit more than you'd potentially anticipate. 
Uh, but yeah, the, you know, and you think back to just 14 onwards. I was walking with Nicholas Colsarts and he goes, gosh, this is going to be fun on Sunday because it's almost like the gauntlet and every open kind of has to have one. You think back to 12 months ago when Cam shot 64 on the final day and at St Andrews and for there, the, you know, the flashpoint of the final day is kind of the gauntlet of seven through 11. And then there's no deny, then you're in. If you don't have the game for, you know, the last seven holes, you're going to get found out pretty quickly and it's all on. And I think for this, there's almost this little level of anonymity as you snake your way around the golf course. You know, you kind of feed your way out from four onwards and then 14, it's all on. So Cam Smith just going through a few clubs here in the rain on this Tuesday at Royal Liverpool. Still raining, everyone, at Royal Liverpool <laughs> <laughs> on this Tuesday hasn't stopped. Uh, the forecast looks like it's going to rain till about 5 p.m. today. So practice rounds were very busy late yesterday. I think all the players saw the forecast and they all just wanted to get out in good conditions as well. Because um, uh, Thursday, Friday looks decent here, forecast. I think it's really important to play nine holes in the weather. And this is, and it was something that was reflected back when I was talking to Jamie Mulligan, like I said, Cantlay's coach. Um, and he said, we wanted to make sure that it was either, if we're going to do it, you do it on the Monday or Tuesday, so you can use Wednesday to kind of reset and, and rest up a little bit. But just understanding how your body moves, how the golf course reacts, what kind of spin you're getting, in, you know, into the greens, if it's skipping or not, so much to take in. Yeah, there is, yeah. So, Cam Smith, the crew watching on as well. He hits a few more down the range. So yeah, a few others just leaving the range. They might have some practice rounds organized for this afternoon. Caddies will be hard at work, as I said, in this weather. Beanies on as well. You didn't think you'd see in July in the UK, but they're, uh, they're firmly out today. I think as well, Cam Smith himself winning at Live London as well, as you say, talking about form, yeah. I think he'll fancy his chances as well now of winning mm. this week. Oh, completely. Well, Cam's one of those guys that he's a little bit less vocal about it, but he backs himself every week. Like he really does. He's got and has always had this really lovely laid back casual mentality. So if I like any time I see Cam, if I'm walking along the side, he yells out, like, oh, come and have a chat. Like, it, it could be the biggest week of his life and he's still going to engage with people. He's exceptionally well built as a human um, on that front. But, you know, think back to a great example of that. He had Ash Barty walking around with him 12 months he ago. He did, yeah. At St Andrews, you know, and former world number one tennis player has now kind of gone into a, a different section of her life. Yeah. But huge golfing fan. She plays off. She's an excellent know, yeah. golfer. Yeah, she's off. I, she was almost a scratch golfer now, I think. Uh, but he's just so chilled and so crazy. He's, he's exactly what kind of you can see on your screens. Um, I saw him yesterday, he was, uh, played with Adam Scott in a practice round, but on the range, Cam just was like looking in Adam's bag and just took a few clubs out of Adam's bag, just hitting Adam's clubs as well. He was just like, I was just trying them out, seeing what they're like. I think he's, you see that more at an open. Like everyone is so excited to be here. There's an energy that is different at the open to any other event of the year. Uh, and I think that we're seeing that really nicely reflected in live at the range as well. You know, we get to go into the champions locker room with Colin Morikawa, Francesco Molinari walks in. Uh, it's all pretty laid back and everyone's trying to do that. But he's kind of like that week in, week out, no matter what. Yeah. Cam Smith, wind's just picking up maybe a little bit now as well. Remember, he won at home of golf, St. Andrews last year, the 150th Open. And yesterday, unfortunately for him, he had to return the claret jug, and this was his thoughts. The of the Open is what makes it so special. It's our oldest trophy that we're competing for. The last round last year was all a bit of a blur, to be honest. I remember feeling probably more relieved than anything else on the 18th hole once it was all done and it's like a dream come true. I love all these little towns here on the coast. 
you can tell that the open means a lot to these towns and it definitely brings a buzz. It's a good test. It's probably a little bit tighter off the tee than St Andrews. So yeah, just have to keep it in the fairway and, and just really be creative. It's something that I love doing. I'm not sure about returning the Claret Jug. I feel like I don't want to let it go yet. It's been such a cool trophy to have. All the greats that have ever played the game are on this trophy. You know, hopefully it's a bit of added motivation to get it back in the future than just going out there and, and giving it my all. How are you, mate? I'm fine. Thank you very much. She's beautiful, isn't she? Did you have fun with her? Yeah, it was so, so much fun. I mean, some of the old names are just unbelievable. Yep. And it was a real pleasure having you as our champion. I'll try and get it back, eh? Yeah, no, it would be fantastic to have you win again. Yeah, a very interesting there from Cam Smith. And he said in his press conference earlier this week, he said he was holding back tears, mm. uh, giving the claret jug back. Just shows how much that meant to him. I think it did at a very pivotal time in his life as well. Uh, hopefully he just looks at it and goes, well, I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> You're coming back with me. Uh, but I think, you know, what it means to have something like, you know, a green jacket or a claret jug. I don't know that that you'd necessarily understand that unless you'd done it. You know, you people talk about it, but the concept of having it, you know, he did it in the middle of the dinner table <laughs> for, for ages. <laughs> um, and, you know, and it's like it, he goes and has has wine with Kari Webb and things like, like he, you know, he lives a pretty privileged life. Like she's won a couple herself, but the the concept of the validation that comes along with that and then having to give it back, yeah, your little piece of uh, history, yeah. I'm not surprised, it must be emotional. I think it would be. I, I, th I think also that what I understand from Cam, and you'll obviously know this, he's not just proud of himself for doing it, but proud for his country, Australia as well. I know that's a huge thing for, for Australia as well. It was massive, yeah. It was picked up by all of the, the, the biggest news channels in Australia, which golf gets a little bit of, but it doesn't get that much. Like we have, you know, we've had Minji win two majors. We've had Hannah Green. Like that, it takes a major to get, you know, to kind of get that coverage back home in golf. Um, we have, we've got a lot of people that work. Well, we've got very few people, but they work well above their weight uh, in golf media, and everyone kind of knows each other. But it, it was massive, uh, and I know, you know, obviously like the the storylines of the last eighteen months and that kind of thing. But the impact and how much he gives back to the game. So let's not forget, he, he gave money away to, on the Cameron Smith scholarship before it was cool to do that. He was doing that with it, without anyone even knowing about it. And guys like Louis Dobbola, Jed Morgan uh, are coming through the ranks now. Amongst others, there's a whole wave uh, of Queensland golfers that are reaping the rewards of his generosity. Uh, something again that Kari Webb did and, and now he's taken him to the US Opens and stuff. Like he, he's really giving back in the best way you can, because it's not just his money, it's his time. You've mentioned Australian golf there. They've got, you've got the likes of Cam Smith, Leash, Scotty, but like you, the, the guys you mentioned, and Minwoo Lee as well, who I don't think people realise quite how good Minwoo Lee is. <laughs> He's an incredible golfer. I have a secret about Minwoo. Go on. So this, the one thing that people don't realise about Min is how sweet he is. So you And you would never know that. Looking at him, you know, he looks brash and bold and you know he's got way more than his fair share of charisma which I love because he's he's electric to watch but next time you watch him watch him engage with everyone he looks for young kids in the crowd and he goes and he's and he kind of locks eyes with them and goes and singles them out he loves kids he's got such a nice gentle nature something Min Minji and I have talked about over the years and she's like he's just such a sweet younger brother you know and so and in a lot of ways would have been so much easier for him to not be quite as good as his sister because she had the limelight. But he loved the game, which made her love the game. So it was actually his love for the game that drove the family, M perhaps even more so than, than Minji's, which is all Clara's, their, their mum, who was the one that got him into the game as well, which is quite unique, you know. I don't always see the mums doing it, but more the merrier, I say. But I think what's also interesting, and I think Min recognises that when he was a youngster, he was looking up to his idols, waiting for autographs and things like that. And he realised the importance that now he's in that spot. 
he should give back as well, which he does, as you say, all the time. Mm, yes. Yeah, they're, they're great with Genius, Hannah Green as well. Uh, we've got some really incredible ambassadors and they're young. You know, they're not, none of them are even 30, you know, not even 30 yet. Uh, Hannah goes back and, and literally tees it up every single time with Genius whenever she can. Like she just put, kind of puts her, her time where her mouth is, it's not even her money. And Cam is, uh, he's kind of a good little role model in the fact that like we say, he's so chilled, but he works so hard. Like if you looked at him, you wouldn't think you, you know, you, you could put him in the wrong category. We get it. But he is an incredibly hard worker and, and he shows, he shows the, like these young guys, what it actually takes to perform. And there's, there's nothing laid back about it. There's no days off. It's interesting, I was uh, here yesterday and we had Rory on the range and we were just looking at some of the, uh, the ball speed and the carry and the apex for Rory. This is a completely different, you know, <laughs> set, set, but this will also work around Royal Liverpool as well. It will, you know, we've, we've seen it done both ways, haven't we, with, with Tiger and Rory McIlroy around this place where, you know, Rory was hitting his bombs and T Tiger left it in the bag for the week, pretty much in the locker room for the week, the driver. So... You know, you're looking at flat carry, what, 258? I mean, that's that's going to work because <laughs> it's going to feed back to the fact that it's not the longest on the open rotor uh, by any means. It's not necessarily going to be the most penal version of itself as well this week. The, the weather's going to be there, but it's not going to be severe. Not like we had last weekend where we had storms and we had 40 mile an hour winds on the, on the Sunday. His whole game is centred around keeping it in play because he knows his good shots are good enough and his bad ones he can save. It sounds so simple to put it that way, but it's just it's it's funny drop sh shots. He's just shaking his head at a few of them here. No, I'm not quite sure. A few, few just leaking right, maybe. Not the easiest conditions we just say for practicing at the moment <laughs> as well. No. It isn't. One of the things you've got to be careful about with especially with some of the modern drivers is just getting a lot of moisture on the face. Um, particularly, like, it's interesting talking to some of the guys when we're walking around and, and Nico Colsart's like, he's like, yeah, but he's got the newer model, so you've got to make sure you keep wiping that one. It, even more so than, like, one from, you know, uh, two, two years prior. Uh, the additions of the very same driver. Just hitting this baby cut consistently with the driver, obviously something he's working on. Um, it, as you can say, he can, he can shape it both ways, Cam. Um, these are all the balls. Here, the fireworks going off, everyone. All the balls that Cam Smith hit on the range <laughs> today. A lot lower apex than we saw with Rory's yesterday, mm -hmm. but you know, two completely different swings. Yeah, that's to be expected. Yeah. And that's it's so interesting when. When we were talking about the Aussie guys, we've had some conversations about which, what major they're going to win first. Mm. And with Cam, it was always Augusta. It was really okay. And so just purely because of his short game and because he just seemed to have a natural affinity to it. Uh, I think with Cam, it was always going to be condition base with the open. In the end, it wasn't. He just, <laughs> he just putted the absolute dots off it and got out of, you know, <laughs> you think back to 17 last year, uh, that's still oh. remarkable what he managed to pull off putting around the bunker. You look at him par. over the putt on 17. If you say he's getting there in two, yeah. no way. Yeah. Utter madness. So Cam Smith back to the irons. He's flicking through these clubs fairly swiftly. Maybe just warming down now. Probably get into the warmth cup of tea. Try and stay dry. But we'll leave out there for the time being, trying to work out his swing.
Hello guys, yes I've made it to the putting green and just for your information back at the driving range, if you do want to pop over here, it's a seven minute walk. I've strided it out, I've got the timings down to perfection. If you're late for a tea time or if you're late to the putting green, you could probably do it in five. But look at this, what a spot to watch. You can see all the members flooding towards the windows, enjoying the views of the best in the world. We've had Max Homer, Scotty Schefflers just left as well. Got young Harrison Crow there, our Asia Pacific amateur champion. Such an amazing atmosphere, especially for the fans, because look at this fence, right on the putting green. All of a sudden, inside, outside, we should say on the side. Look at this, some of the best in the world, and who have we found here? Margot Brook, hello. hello You're on the right side of the fence here, how's I the view? Am. It's been amazing watching... U.S. Open champion Wyndham Clark is here. We've got Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas. Very exciting. You mentioned a lot of American names. I, I wonder who you're supporting, eh? <laughs> no, I'm actually supporting Rory McIlroy. Oh, okay. He is my bet to win the Open. Well, you are a bit of a poker player, aren't you? Is he, <laughs> is he your odds-on favourite? I mean, he just won the Scottish Open, so why can't he do it again? Well, that's a great point. <laughs> I think a lot of people would hope for that result as well. But <laughs> how cool is it to be here? You've come from LA to witness one of the greatest championships on planet Earth. Yeah, it's been absolutely incredible to be in this course and to play this course the other day, and the Invitational was very, very special. Wow, the Invitational did look very fun, didn't it? And there's a few highlights. What was your highlight out there? Ooh, I think my highlight, which was not televised, was <laughs> <laughs> my drive on 18 was really fun. Nice. Yeah, I hit it straight down the fairway and pretty far, so it was a good good feeling. It's pretty crazy you get to play the venue just before these pros. You've, uh, you've got to enjoy experiences like that, don't you? It's insane. I feel very, very, uh, yeah, privileged. It was great. Nice. So what's your plan today? Roaming around, checking out the best in the world. Who, who are you going to find next? I don't know, yeah, we're just checking out, watching some putting right now and then maybe head over to the driving range and walk the course a bit, but we're coming tomorrow too and hopefully the weather is a little bit better tomorrow. Well, I was about to ask you, is this <laughs> LA weather or...? No. <laughs> <laughs> The Abs opposite, actually. Absolutely not. Well, it's great to have you here braving it out for the best of the world. So we'll look forward to catching up yes. with you and well done on the, other, on the other day. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, look at this. Thanks, Margot. Thanks, George and Margot. Just chilling out there, side of the putting green. Maybe we'll, George will find her later on. A bit more chat, I reckon. He's, al <laughs> he's always got plenty. <laughs> he's got plenty up his sleeve. <laughs> oh, yeah. classic. Yeah, she's a big golf fan. Went out to the US Open as well. She's had a picture with the Claret Jug uh, the other day, too. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I, I like the fact that they're kind of leaning into other avenues to grow yeah, the game. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. There's uh, Bryson, former US Open champion. Bryce, a slimmer Bryson DeChambeau mm. as well. Uh, I mean, he's almost unrecognisable to a couple of years ago. Yeah, I walked past him today, and he was out playing uh, practice round with John Daly. Okay. Imagine those two. I went and I went, yeah, that's definitely John Daly. And I went, who's who's the other person? And then I realised it was Bryson. It's like, oh, okay. And they yeah. were equidistant off the tee. Really? Yep. That's interesting. I know. That's interesting. But I didn't see what Bryson hit, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They might have just hit both hit to the correct spot. Exactly. Now, these yeah. might be uh, different stats compared to Cam Smith a few minutes. Obviously, they're hit hitting different clubs as well. But uh, Bryson's not, not got the best Open Championship record. He top 10 last year. That's his only top 10 in the Open. Um, but someone, I think, just looking to find his feet once again in major championships. Well, I think we've talked about it a lot in the fact that the lure for Bryson DeChambeau is to overthink. So if you give him a lot of choices, I think in a lot of ways it kind of makes the game a bit harder. You can get stymied by, you know, how many clubs you can actually pull out of the bag. And clear decisions just seem to keep that a little bit quieter. But he leans into it. He's one of the only people in the game that just lean into the concept of thinking everything through to the nth degree which takes some training. Yeah, of course. I mean, he's had a, a, a two good majors, PGA this year, and the US Open as well. So we could say he's trending nicely ahead of this week. But it'll be in, he's, he fascinates me, Bryson. I, I love, <laughs> I love golf. I love sports when you think outside the box. 
I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And I like the way he thinks about the game because it is completely different to most people. It is. It, he He's a niche market. <laughs> I think that's, you know, <laughs> if you're going to try and throw a blanket over him. Uh, but like you can see, yeah, T, T4 at the PGA, top 20 at the US Open. Miss cut at the Masters. But in terms of, I don't know, I think I think the Open's a spot to strip your game down, not to add more kind of prongs to the mm. to the rake, so to speak. There's chunky grips on his clubs, which he's had a while. But the way he goes about the game and the way he thinks and the way his coach, it wouldn't work with any, most players. They, their their heads would be scrambled egg. It would be, yeah, completely. Uh, and because not many people are capable, and that's something that perhaps we don't always do the best job of of pointing out. How, in a way, he he is kind of iconic because uh, he is very different. He's also very outspoken about it all. So we're all along for the journey. Get sights live at the range that you don't get much elsewhere. This is a worm's eye view of, Br of Bryson and the other players there on the range. Okay, just working out. Missed such a big thing now with, with the phone there. Just video. I know, I know the likes of Charlie Hull, Georgia Hall, who you know very well as well. They're big. Georgia reckons she's got over a thousand videos of her swing on her phone. Well over a thousand. And George is quite aut autonomous. You know, she works with Rob Rock, but she has always kind of been someone that just goes out and figures it out on her own. And I think that's part and parcel of that. It'd be fa fascinating to have a microphone here on Bryce, just to see what the chat is, what they're talking about. Mm. This is why he fascinates me, is that, I mean, he's, 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 like he's tweaking every single <laughs> swing here. He, he also checks his stats on everyone. So yeah, he's tweaked four more things since we saw him last, Bryson. But we've seen it, I remember a major championship before where he's played around, he's not gone quite well. He's the last one on the range, in the dark with the floodlights on and it's just Bryson. I can't remember which one it was and he was practicing on the end mm. and he had like his head in his hand and at the end it was like, yeah. I, I was just like. <laughs> no, yeah I, yeah, I remember what you're talking about. And I, like no one can deny the fact the man works hard in, in way more ways than I think the vast majority of golfers do. The attention to detail is, is pinpoint. And so, you know, I think that's GC quad, isn't it? That he's got it. He literally had that out with him on the golf course. He, he will check his numbers on everything. He has these, um, I'm trying to work out how to phrase it. I, I, I sat next to, I sat behind him, watched him go through his practice uh, routine. It was about two years ago. And he has these things, what he calls acceleration profiles, right? And so this is me eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah, you know, just knows slowly. It, yeah, it was kind of like, you know, the mic holders in TV where they inch closer and I was slowly just like scooching my way forward until, you know, he probably nearly could have hit me on his backswing. But he was talking about when you get your speed on the way back or on the way through, and he, especially with his wedges. So what kind of acceleration profile works better for different conditions? So whether it's, and, and when he started talking about it, I was like, this is so obvious. Why don't, why don't we all talk about it this way? You know, the concept of being languid on the way back, or do you go kind of three, three quarter back with a little bit more pace on the way through? Uh, and so even just the way he kind of sections off parts of his game is quite interesting to me. Yeah, driver out now for Bryson. So these uh, stats and statistics will be interesting here for Bryson. I mean, if you are coming to the Open on one of the days, I would go follow Bryson for a few holes, because especially with driver. It is something to behold. It really is. Yeah, so... I mean, Rory was going, I mean, conditions were better yesterday, but Rory was going 320, 324 yesterday. 
uh, flat carry yep. as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is what the luxury of modern technology gives you and the fact that you get to calibrate every day. So, you know, you, for us, we think about, all right, six irons, 165, 170, but they get to every single morning pull it out and go, what is it going today? Like, it's a reset every single time. There's no one out there with a baseball glove, like the olden days. Did you ever do that, Josh? No. 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 You were the person that was having the balls hit at them? Or? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Different, very de and, and not always intentionally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. you hope it wasn't. I hope not, yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah. I saw, I remember watching Bryson in the um, World Long Drive Championship in the final against Martin Borgmeier. Bryson was not out of place there. It was quite a sight. He was going 400 yards well over. It just, again, it has him outside the box trying to get another layer to his game that no one else on tour, either, any tour, really is doing. Or has done. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's a real venture into the unknown and, and into what you can do in every single element of his game, including his nutrition. You know, you think back to the President's Cup his neck was two centimetres wider. Like, his <laughs> neck was wider. Yeah. Like, who, who even has that conversation? Yeah, pretty amazing. Still going through the video. It's about the 10th or 15th video he's taken in the last five minutes, Bryson. Rain. Go on. Yeah, well, it's a Tuesday. This is the day to do it. Tomorrow's your field your field day. This Tomorrow's the day that you start doing more drills that have a little bit more consequence uh, in the lead up. A lot of guys will go out and play a nine hole match or something like that as well. Brighton going fairly quickly through these balls on the range. Yeah, he's, he's working through it as well, isn't he? Mm. He's got. You would think he'd get tired as well, hitting so many balls. Compared to Cam Smith, we saw a minute ago, he was pretty chilled, and like he's hitting one every 45 seconds, every minute. We're here. This is one every 20 odd seconds here. Yeah, and it's just interesting those little drills because it's almost like he doesn't really even load his his right hip. His right hip almost pivots back on itself at the top of the swing. That's the nature of kind of a one play takeaway mm. that. There has to be some give somewhere. So there's a few gaps on the range. Maybe players just getting a bit of lunch and also drying off, you would imagine, as well. It's Harris English, who I think, I believe, just become a father, Harris yes. English, didn't he? As well, that was, I think, last week. I think you are correct. I think, well, why do I have July 10th in my... Oh, really? if, I know his, if I know his date. child's birthday, <laughs> then I, I think I'm... I'm in trouble. Yeah. Uh, here's Rikuya Hishina, who we've seen on the DP World Tour mm -hmm. uh, a few events recently, the Japanese player. He, he played last year at St. Andrews. Justin Rose withdrew, and Hishino got his spot basically in the Open at St. Andrews. Mm. But I have seen bits of him this year, DP World Tour, and he's contended a few times. He's, he's looked a decent player from what I've seen of him. Well, if you, if you wind the clock back, I'm going to say three or four years, he had a season where he, I think he won four or five times in Japan. He was the man in Japan. Um, I can't believe that just rhymed, but <laughs> alas. Uh, he also hit the first tee shot at the Olympics. You know, he, that, he got yeah. that honor. And you, you know, you think about playing in Japan <laughs> with Hideki Matsuyama as your, your partner. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. He's, he's a very dynamic player as well. He's got quite a, a fundamentally sound golf swing as well. You don't always see that in Japan in the fact that they have, like you think of Ai Miyazato, Hideki Matsuyama. Yeah. Like, the, you know, there's a lot of great examples. Even Nasahata Oka, but his is a, perhaps a, just a little bit more textbook. Uh, still wildly efficient. Yeah, he um, qualified for the Open here. He was second on the order of merit on the Japan Golf to behind Kazuki Higa, who himself has been very impressive in DP World Tour events, especially a few months ago. I remember he was a, it was a number of consecutive weeks where he was contending as well, um, obviously all trying to emulate Hideki Matsuyama, who won the Masters as well. And that was, I mean, talking about 
Cam Smith being big in Australia when Matsuyama won. I mean, Japan just stopped, basically. <laughs> the, the existence of Japanese players as well, whether it be on the DP World Tour or the PGA Tour, to, to kind of, you know, paint between the lines for you, they have their own media that travel. They have almost, you know, we talk about kind of the concept of Netflix following plays around. That's been Japanese golfers for ages. Very true, yeah. You know, they, they give so much access. There is a, a lot of pressure because it's, you know, Japan is the second biggest golfing market in the world. Uh, Korea is actually quite quickly catching up. That's number three. So it goes to the USA, Japan, Korea, and they're almost neck and neck now, which is fascinating given uh, the, the nature of how golf is played in Korea. There's less golf courses, especially, and there's so much of it's actually um, done in indoors. I think 50% of it's done yeah, on simulators, right. in, in, especially in Seoul. But such good golf courses over in Japan and quite differing as well from north to south because the climate differs okay. so much that you actually get quite a good repertoire of how to play a lot of different courses, even just from staying in domestic events, which you don't always get in other parts of the world. I had to travel outside of Australia to get kind of long, lush, bent grass in the UK or, you know, up in the Pacific Northwest to understand what it's like to hit a full swing and try and have it go six feet to the pin. <laughs> yeah. That was foreign to me, you know, and so to be able to stay at home and get a really solid golf game all the way through that's going to travel quite well. Mm -hmm. I think that's often why it's, especially in the women's side, you, you see so many Japanese contenders in the women's open. A lot, know? yeah. Yeah. A lot. There are, yeah, you're right. Think about Hinako Shibuno as well, who's actually won one as well. Uh, it's quite fascinating going over there and they stop, you know, you, you play nine holes, you stop. <laughs> you go in for a four or five course meal and then you go out and play <laughs> have again. have a sleep after that, I think <laughs> I'd need as well but you, you're mentioning the pressure there i remember the f one of the first tournaments that i came it was in america and i saw there were so many it was just i couldn't see the player but there was there was about 10 cameras and then 20 photographers i thought it's tom cruise here i thought is he at the tournament and it was hideki matsuyama i was like and then people tell me this is every week even not even in a major on a normal pga tour event and then i'm thinking like you said the pressure on him mm back home must be immense yeah and when and even working in japan i've done a lot of the broadcasts over there and the way that they go about it is so different to and we don't get to see any of it which is the sh such a shame because honestly it's a great watch uh but they build boxes for the last like nine holes and they literally they shuttle the commentators quickly between them and it's it's amazing watching like just the 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 breadth of the experience and how much media is there, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite incredible. You see it for Zozo, you know, I, I covered the Zozo last year, uh, just outside of Tokyo and Narita, and, and they literally can't even, like he, he wouldn't be able to get to the range from the clubhouse. <laughs> you know, you just keep getting stopped. Beautiful golf swing though. Mm. So we're gonna leave Shino on the range, in the rain, but we'll, we'll join him in a few moments time. But let's go find George. He's found the Australian David Michaluzzi. What have you done here? All of a sudden you've chucked your name on a tee sheet yeah. and uh, got a couple of oh, okay golfers join you. Yeah, why not? Why not? I came here a little bit late, had to do some things early and then, yeah, looking to push my tee time back and I saw John's name and we're part of the same management group so I just thought why not and then uh, then Phil came to the tee so not bad three ball for a what is it Tuesday afternoon <laughs> not bad <laughs> a casual tap around you yeah. know if the open championship wasn't special enough how cool is it playing with some of the stars of the game like this and maybe learning a thing or two oh it's unreal it's unreal just to just even be here is unreal so um, also to be with a, an idol of mine especially over the last couple of years uh, John just just killing it it's it's so cool and I got to meet Phil a few years ago in Saudi and for the Saudi International and oh, it's just it's just sick. So cool. Loving it. Talk us through your journey to get here. What's it like working so hard and then all of a sudden you're on the big stage? Yeah, well, well this time last year I definitely didn't think I was going to be here, I'll tell you that. But uh, 
No, I just did some hard did some hard work, stuck with my team, and we we just we just grinded it out and felt like I was playing really good golf. And once the season started, I started off with a win and and just stayed there and just and had a couple wins after that. So it was just good confidence. And then coming into I, if you if you're going to tell me at the start of the year that I was going to be playing a couple PGA Tour events and a couple majors, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> I'd laugh at you. But um, but yeah, just stoked, so stoked to be here and looking forward to the rest of the year as well. Mate, we're looking forward to watching you. Enjoy your round. A couple of great people to learn from. Will so do. go chew the ears off for us. Will, right? will do, will do. All right. Always good to chat, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Well, how about that? The young Australian with a lovely haircut as well, I might add. A little, <laughs> little baby mullet there. A truly special atmosphere. That's what I love about the Open Championship. It just offers so many different things. Players from all around the world and with the Open qualifying... Almost anyone can make it here, but there's so many cool little stories from players qualifying and, and earning the right to play against the world's best. The sun is trying to its best to pop out. The atmosphere is building. Let's go watch some John Rahm golf. Well done, David. Yeah, brilliant for David. His first Open mm. as well. Someone you, you, you know a bit more than I do. I followed him for a few holes yesterday. I'd not seen him play before. And he was hitting these two iron stingers off the tee, which mm. I was like, oh, you know, you just gasp a little bit. Yeah. And they were 10 foot off the ground and going 280. It was incredible to watch. Yeah, he's got he's got a really uh, beautiful, natural, momentum built golf swing. It's got a lot of flow. It's got a lot of speed at the bottom as well. Uh, but yeah, he he actually prioritized trying to win the order of merit. He could have gone to Q schools. And he turned down Q schools elsewhere and said, no, I need to back myself here. I need to back my game. And then ended up winning the ISPS under PGA Tour of Australasian Order of Merit, which finished earlier this year. And, and as part of that, you get a DP World Tour card, but his doesn't start until 2024. So this is quite an interesting year for him trying to piece together a schedule. He's had quite a number of uh, DP World Tour starts. He's kind of, he hasn't made the most of them yet, but he's, got, he's kind of in that learning section and there's no consequence for him he doesn't have to keep anything he's only gaining something this year uh, so in a way that's kind of a, a nice little way for him to to find his feet and watching you know his mate Dan Hillier win as well yeah. would have been great because it's so great to have a yardstick to measure yourself against there's another Australian there Lucas Herbert someone you know well yeah stayed, well. stayed with him last week actually at the Scottish Lucas Yeah, so we, we rented a, a house. He's not much of a cook. When you say not much of a cook. He doesn't, yeah. It literally uh, yeah. doesn't cook. And he also, he's not great on eating his greens. He's gonna kill me <laughs> for saying this, but that's what this show's all about. Uh, yeah, so we had, we did a family night on the Tuesday night and I cooked chili, cause I knew that, you know, as the week goes on, you see his, um, that's his coach there, Dom as a party yeah. in, the, in the green. Uh, you've got Marcus, who's in the background, who's from Bendigo, same spot as Lucas, who's his best mate there on the left, and is his manager, and that's Nick Pugh, who's his caddy. One who's of the best beards in golf. Did you see the, the social media piece? They called him Papa Golf. That was it. Yes, yeah. I did. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, it was excellent. So he's he looks like a complete character, right? There is no one that is more prepared, no caddy that's more prepared or diligent than Nick on tour. He will, he'll measure the height of the grass if he has to. Like, <laughs> Lucas tries to catch him out with stuff he doesn't know, but it just never happens. So, yeah, they're, they're quite a team. He's worked with Dom ever since. I think ever since is probably the, the way to do it. He hasn't changed much in his golf swing over the years because they haven't had to. They kind of just developed his natural talent. He's the kind of guy that if there's a gap in the trees, he goes for it. And he's always done that. His dad, Lyndon, who I'm sure will be watching, um, and Meredith are back home. And they're, they've just let him be completely the golfer that he was from the start and tried to fine tune it, uh, which is a lesson I think that a lot of people can draw from. What I like about Lucas every time I see him, he always has a smile on his face. He's always enjoying golf. And as you said, he's really competitive, wants to win, <laughs> doesn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's not, like, I, I probably wouldn't... I've never broached the topic of board games with him. I won't. I'm not going to do it. Oh, is, is that kind of competitive? Yeah, he's wow. pretty competitive. 
but we had a lot of we had a lot of really good chats last week. We didn't actually sit on our phones much or anything like that. We were all sitting kind of around the kitchen table, on the benches, having dinner and just and just kind of chatting and catching up and solving all of the world's problems Always. and that kind of thing. He's quite an introspective guy, more than people would understand if you watched him in a you know in a press conference. If you watch him on the golf course, uh, he's he's a very thoughtful guy, and he's. I mean, you know, we've been friends for a long time, but there's a lot more to him that the people that are close to him get to see that sometimes doesn't always kind of ex extrapolate across the screens. But I guess that's what we're here for. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, loving a chat, as you say, Nick there. I'd, there'd be so much written in that book yeah. <laughs> as well. Um, but we'll let them have a chat, uh, a chat and we'll be back in a few moments time. <sighs> Doctors confirm golf is good for your physical and mental health. Welcome back, everyone. A few more players out on the range. It looks like the range maybe eased off, which is always uh, good. Or as always with an Open Championship, the best players in the world here, including the world number one, who's playing some fantastic golf at the moment. And let's hear from Scotty Scheffler. You've been incredibly consistent this year, particularly in the majors. With this being the last one of the year, how much more does that motivate you? I'm not really sure. I think, um, you know, I always get excited for the majors. They're favorite tournaments to play, best fields, um, usually the best golf courses. And so um, I wouldn't say any one of them is more important than the other, but definitely excited to be here. I um, mean, excited to see what this course is like in tournament conditions. Great. We'll have a question from the front, please. Uh, Scotty, on the uh, talking points of your consistency, which a lot of people are talking about, is, can you identify a way coming into this season that Rory and Rom's success helped you to sort of elevate your game or inspired you to elevate your game to such a consistent level? Um, I'm not really sure. I think I'm always, you know, striving to get a little bit better at a time and um, I'm, any competition is, is healthy for sure. And um, yeah, I would say that just, you know, keep trying to get a little bit better. And it's nice when you get to actually see the results because a lot of times in this game you put in the work and the results are never really that immediate. Um, and so it's nice to be able to look back at the last year or two and, and see some good results. Specifically, how did you get better? I just keep trying to get a little bit better at a time. I don't focus um, too much energy on one area of the game. I try and keep things pretty even across the board, always working on the short game, putting and hitting the ball. And um, I don't try to overthink things. I try to keep things as simple as possible. And right now that recipe's been working quite well and um, just trying to do more of it, just try and hit a little bit better, chip a little bit better, putt a little bit better. And um, hopefully the results are continue to improve. Yeah, well done one. Scotty Scheffler in a good place really with his game. Ali, seven consecutive top five finishes on the PGA Tour. <laughs> and he's never been outside the top 12 in 18 straight events. It's mind-blowing considering the putting that he's had or not had for those events. Well, when you think about it, it kind of like it kind of makes sense because if you're on the green, I mean, the worst you're going to make is you know you get a three putt. So you kind of he, he's taken so many numbers out of play to just keep himself in the mix. But how on earth he got back into it last week, Scotty <laughs> Scheffler? Yeah. 
um, at the Genesis Scottish Open. That was that was remarkable uh, when you think about it. And he was he was over par at one point in time early on, and all of us are like, oh, maybe this won't be his week. Silly us, you I know. know. Silly. But if he has half a good putting day or week, mm. he's going to blow the field away. Yeah, imagine if he putted like Lucas Herbert. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah, that's very true. Just a little look inside Lucas's bag here. A few of the players I followed, they've had like in the practice rounds, 16, 17 clubs, just yeah. trying to adapt to see what will suit around here at Royal Liverpool. Well, he actually, what you can see on the left, he actually uses leather grips, mm -hmm. which is quite rare. Uh, they're made back in Australia. It's a company called Gripmaster, and they, they're they incredibly tacky. Okay. So you almost don't even need a grip with them. So uh, Nick, as he's known, and Pewey, uh, on tour, obviously he's, he's so methodical that he like cleans them every single morning and that kind of thing that they are again it's a swing guide over on the right as well wade ormsby's uh, family developed that okay um the little kind of the, the little yellow yeah. apparatus he had that on uh, about five he minutes did, ago yeah. yeah yeah and what is that what does that device do as well for people who have maybe not seen that uh so when you take it back it it rests on your, and I'm actually having to swing the club to think about my lefts and rights here, <laughs> just to put this into perspective. So as it goes back, so you actually, the, the little U shape on the top will rest on top of your right arm on the way back, your right wrist. And so eff effectively, if you've got any kind of, if you're across or underneath, it just won't rest properly on the wrist. It's a very simple thing to do to make sure that you're, you're dialed in. It's also really good for, again, keeping your, your big muscles because it just keeps everything really quiet in your hands, uh, which is good. So you grow, you grow, go on, keep going, Ali. You, you keep going, Ali. Oh, you, you were about <laughs> to say something, I was going to interrupt Lucas. you there. Well, I was just going to talk about his putting because obviously I touched on it, but he's got, so he's got a place in Noosa as well as one in Orlando. He's from Bendigo, country Australia, uh, down in just about two hours outside of Melbourne. Uh, but he's got a full one of like a massive putting. I don't even know. It's a p practice putting green, but it's got all of the monitors. You can change all of the sides to it. Like it's a, it's it's a, a golfer's dream. dream. This it is. is. Yeah, it's amazing. But it, he's he's so simple with his putting, he, the way that he looks at it. Like they they do little kind of it's, oh, it's not even touch-ups, but they do a lot of calibration, really. So you'll see Nick Nick goes out and gets it all set up, and then Lucas kind of saunters in and finishes his, his drills. Do you, so, obviously, being from Victoria, you would have played on a lot of Australia, some of the best golf courses in the world. Mm. I think he was top 20 in his last Open as well. Do you think this course is going to suit Lucas? I've always said if he's going to win a major, it'd be the Open. Okay. So that was the conversation. You know, that was the conversation point for him. Uh, I think it'll be the first. He's incredibly steely. He's brilliant within a sniff of the lead. So that's one thing you don't want. If like he's probably under an underrated chaser on a leaderboard. Um, and and if the weather gets worse, he gets better. So these are kind of the things that line up for someone like him. Because as soon as you tell Lucas he can't do something, then guess what's going to happen it's it's quite hilarious to handle as a friend at times <laughs> but it's also part of what makes him such a good player yeah. just going through uh, a few things here Lucas oh, Nick's on the phone now but he's still in the uh, in the pad but he's not do you think Lucas will work on much here at the range uh, he, c he kind of gets dialed in a little bit more today's probably the last day that he'll he'll do some work dom his coach wasn't there uh last week and he's just flown in this week so they'll just be checking it all out <laughs> okay we've a uh, good chat there about lucas herbert but i think iona and Inti have dried off they've had a cup of tea let's find them <laughs> back down on the range <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Yeah, we have had a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and pleased to say the rain has stopped and it's actually warming up a little bit. I'm not saying it's sunny quite yet, Incy, but it is getting there and there are still loads and loads of players coming down here, getting their final preparations underway. And behind us, over my left shoulder, Incy's right shoulder, is the one and only Padre Carrington, two-time Open champion winner. And he's just a machine right now, Incy. This guy is just unstoppable in his 50s and genuinely 
on the lips of many as a potential winner this week? Absolutely. First of all, I think you're lying. I'm freezing cold. <laughs> I'm really chilly out here. It's about 16 degrees, but it feels like it's about 10 or 12, to be honest. But yeah, super impressive. He's actually gained quite a bit of distance in the last few years and I remember following him earlier this year in the UAE and actually just seeing it in the flesh he still absolutely stripes the ball I can't tell you yeah and he's so focused Padraig Harrington spoke in his press conference about just really not interested in what anyone else is doing this week who's the favorite he said I, I, I honestly don't really I don't really have an interest he's so dialed in and focused on what he needs to do and his pursuit of improvement and uh, performance is just incredible and there's mm. there's very few players you can compare to Padre because he continually is trying to find more well he's been around for quite a long time and he still absolutely loves it but you know earlier last week he was playing in the Scottish and he said on a Lynx golf course I still fancy my chances against anyone and you can yeah. really tell that in his game because a he's got the wisdom and he's got the experience as well B he's got the confidence he's got the wins already under his belt C he's swinging it brilliantly he's hitting it longer than ever so you kind of combine all those three points together you would have thought he'd have a fantastic chance of giving the young guns a run for their money mm, absolutely he was going along quite nicely through into the weekend of the uh, Genesis Scottish Open as you referenced last week and had a little chat with him a couple of times actually because he's had a say at the Renaissance Club he does quite a lot in terms of golf course design <laughs> now at this stage of his career but you know he still comes back to the DP World Tour and he's right up there with some of the some of the big young hitters and it is so impressive to watch it's absolutely remarkable to think that, that he's now into his 50s which isn't old <laughs> in the grand scheme of things but just how athletic and powerful he is absolutely and he's got his whole team here and see behind him and it just looks like that what it looks like perhaps I don't know seven iron in his hand there he's got the track man behind him what do you think he's going to be looking at right now in terms of numbers on the track man just depends what he's working on to be honest maybe spin rate carry numbers it's definitely got a little bit cooler as well when it's slightly colder the ball doesn't travel as far um you know total number it kind of goes out the window especially when you're playing different shots at different trajectories as well out here but now i think it's interesting just having a look at what's going to go through his mind because you touched upon being part of that kind of design element at the renaissance last week i think if you're a player that has some sort of eye for course design you definitely look at venues that you play through a different lens i think it gets you thinking a lot more and okay this was designed this way because of this reason this is the way to play or apologies there just uh i think a bit of rain possibly in nc's mic yeah Sorry, NC. Just uh, I think it might be some rain in your mic. We'll come back to you in a few moments' time. Uh, put some maybe some new batteries in there. Paul Drake still grinding away. We were just talking there, uh, Ali. You were just mentioning to me there's something different about his driver compared to the rest of his bag. Yeah, well, it's it's about how he grips it. Yeah, so he's actually been doing. He does a single overlap for his iron shots, and then he actually does a double overlap for his driver as part of as part of trying to generate more speed. So instead of you know, and I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this are about to put their hands together just like <laughs> I am, which is very difficult to to do when you're actually holding a mic at the same time. But effectively, yeah, he's got his pinky and his ring finger uh, over the top. Oh, uh, okay. Iona has persuaded Paul Drake to <laughs> come and have a chat. Iona, it's all yours. Uh, I certainly have. You're very kind to give us a little bit of your time when we can see you're working hard as ever. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to over here. I'm just warming up to go out and play. Uh, trying not to get too much into it at all. Uh, it really is just going through my numbers here and just get get ready to play not trying to overthink it certainly not trying to uh, do anything new just just it's just a physical warm-up that's it and of course we saw you last week up in scotland and another solid week anything you're taking away from that into into this week at the open you know I, you know last week i was trying to get m mentally prepared for this week uh, i seemed to do a good job i was i, I got there a bit earlier than i thought uh, and my head was in the right space Thursday, Friday for sure, and, and Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so trying really not to do much now this week and just do the same stuff and uh, see where that brings me. And obviously 
two-time champion of the Open. How great is it to be back and how much do you enjoy this week? I, look, I love being back and I, and I do take time to enjoy the fact that I have won this and there's no doubt I strut around that player's lounge a little taller than I normally <laughs> would. But I'm also conscious that I'm, I'm playing well and I'm trying to get ready for a tournament and I'm trying to, you know, prepare properly. And, and a lot, of, you know... I think all tournaments, but especially majors, it's about getting your preparation right. You know, you've got to get it right. You know, it's a big week, and you you want to make sure that you don't uh, blow yourself out of it before it, it starts. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we really appreciate your time, and wish you all the best this week. I've got a really quick yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got your Wilson's uh, Wilson team behind you. Yeah. This is more so out of curiosity, but I just saw the back of your iron. It's looking pretty rusty, old school. But you've got quite an interesting grip as well. Can you so, talk us yeah, through that? These, these are, are, your, are your standard staff model, but I don't have them. Uh, so they're not chrome finished. Okay. So these will rust up. Okay. Uh, and what does that do? The rust. Anything? Just the looks? Just looks. You know, I, I, yeah, it's just looks. It's, it's just the way it is. So it doesn't have the chrome, so it'll rust. The grip is an interesting it's grip master. Uh, so these grips, they're, they're leather and they get sticky in the wet. So you, you can. So these are dry now. So this, yeah. that, that's what I would call at their driest. They're not yeah. sticky. You think they're sticky, but they're not. Yeah. So if it gets wet, these will get really sticky. Uh -huh. And if it gets humid, they get sticky. So if, you, if yeah. you're playing golf, like I've played 36 holes in the rain where I haven't had to dry my grips. Mm. Uh, and I've also played, uh, you know, in, in, in Malaysia with the humidity and, and again, not had to dry my hands. So they're ideal, mm. but players don't like the idea that you're, you know, your hands do stick to them. Yeah, but once you get used to it, it's no problem. Yeah. yeah. It's no problem at all. Well, could be useful this week. <laughs> Padraig, thank you so much. We wish you well this week and we'll see you around. See you warm up. Yeah. There he goes. He's got another Irishman to play alongside on Thursday. Seamus Power is in his grip. And those interesting grips, in yeah. really interesting. I know Victor Perez plays with them again. A great observation from you. And we'll be back with more insights from the range after the break. Origins Premium Experiences at the Open. The ultimate way to experience golf's original championship. Enjoy unparalleled on-course views as the world's best golfers take on the challenge of the links. With over 10 hours of world-class action, mouth-watering food and complimentary drinks, guests can soak up the nail-biting atmosphere like never before. Watch history in the making. Whether you're looking for the ultimate client experience or a memorable day with a group of friends, Origins offers a variety of fully inclusive premium experiences that cater to every taste and budget. Don't miss your chance to guarantee your place and the experience of a lifetime. Welcome back to Live at the Range. All the brollies are down, everyone. All the fans of the brollies are down. That's a good sign here for the rest of the day at Royal Liverpool. A few more players now out on the range. Bryson's still there. Of course, still Bryson's there. still there. Look at him go. <laughs> He'll be there for a while, yeah. Iona and Inci, they've been speaking to Paul Drake Harrington, but I believe they found someone else on the range to have a chat to. You and Ferguson. We have, you know, I'm always good at spotting a Scotsman and we've seen him just <laughs> spied him creeping on here. And just before you get into your warm up, we thought we'd come and say hello. You and Ferguson, great to see you. you Fresh too. from Scotland, how are you feeling? No, I'm feeling good. I um, was out playing this morning with uh, Tyrell and Tommy, so that's pretty good practice uh, playing with the guys and seeing how to manage this golf course. So it was good and it didn't rain too much. Anything in particular that you learnt from them? Uh, they, just, they were just having fun. I was just enjoying kind of being with them and um, they're obviously really good golfers as well. So just kind of seeing some of the shots they've been they've played here before too. So they were kind of telling me some shots that they've had here before and kind of let me know where not to go and where it's maybe good to go. So it was nice to play with kind of two other Brits and brought a nice crowd with them too. Important question between the two, who's got best chat? <laughs> <laughs> You're setting me up there, but um, 
I don't know. I think they're both they're both funny in their own their own ways, as they're very different, as you all probably know at home, and both of you know as well. <laughs> That's a very neutral answer. Yes. <laughs> to be a politician, Ewan. Yeah. Just it's just briefly tell us about the bag, and have you made any changes this week going into well, another links week, I suppose? Yeah. So usually I've got my seven wood, um, which goes obviously uh, a bit higher. Um, for soft, uh, but I'm mean, a lot of irons off the tee, a lot of 240s, 250s off the tee, so I've got a th uh, three iron in this week that kind of goes a bit lower that I can fizz off the off the tee and get it rolling, rolling down the fairway and hopefully just short the bunkers. Mm. Surely it's worth pointing out these head covers because I don't remember seeing them last week. I feel like you're going on a theme here. Yeah, we've got them um, guitar head covers. Um, they're Beatle, the Beatles yeah. kind of themed. Which is pretty cool, um, and I've got this Liver City of Liverpool golf bag with the postcode and all the kind of bits and bobs on it. So that's yeah. amazing. Pretty cool uh, setup for the week, and hopefully it brings me some 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 luck. Mm. That's good stuff, Ian. Well, we appreciate your time as ever, and we'll let you get cracking on. Obviously, you've got a lot of work to do, but best yeah. of luck this weekend. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Susan, I should have tested you out with your Beatles uh, music no, taste. <laughs> <laughs> I've done him once. Good stuff, good. Right. We will meander back out of Ewan Ferguson's way. He's got his team coming in there. Coach and Caddy just to start dialing things in. Everyone has their own approach, don't they, Incy, when they come down to the range. A lot of players, of course, using these launch monitors to get an idea of how far the ball is flying because each week they have to adapt. No week is the same. I guess, you know, a lot of players do choose to play the Scottish the Genesis Scottish Open because they're getting that kind of links preparation, but no two weeks are the same. Absolutely. It's one of those things when I think when you play a week before the Open, you've got some players who feel as though it's fantastic prep for the Open, uh, but then others like to take the time off and work with their coaches and fine tune certain things in their swings as well. But everyone's different, you know, everyone's got their own sort of DNA. And you can see Bryson DeChambeau there with the launch monitor down and the caddy cleaning every single golf ball, uh, making sure that they get true data. As soon as you get a bit of moisture on the golf ball, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get a little bit less spin, the ball's going to uh, fly a little bit higher as well. So, really important to kind of make sure that's all sorted mm -hmm. and like you said just calculate those numbers mm -hmm. uh, yes well we're just seeing who else is out here i always find it really interesting on the range because mm. Everyone's so different. You get some players who are super well calibrated and they're really methodical with what they do. You get other players who get extremely technical and you know they've got alignment sticks down and they're working on their club path and takeaways and all sorts. And you get other players who are very performance driven and they almost don't have anything and just you know pick out targets in the distance and switch it up each time. You get other players who try and play the golf course out on the range. So you know we've got a pretty full range here and everyone's just working on very different things each time. Let's take a little wander down here and see and look at Bryson DeChambeau because he's one that always draws the crowd, doesn't he? People love to watch Bryson hmm. and he's, well, known as the scientist. He's just been so experimental with his game, hasn't he? Try, trying different things. But look at the size of those I know. grips. I know. Oh my I've goodness. actually held one of those before. It is literally like a baseball bat. I've only got tiny hands, but seriously, that's... Unbelievable. My giddy aunt. You have never seen anything <laughs> like that. That's the most Scottish thing you've ever said. <laughs> just about understand what that meant. I mean, that's just remarkable. I, I have experimented with thicker grips because I can take the wrist out of it and I've had mm. wrist troubles and all sorts and it can be a good thing to, to go for some thicker grips, but that's really taking the thick grip to a whole new extreme. Yeah. Let's take a look at this one. Just let's listen to it as well. Smack. Totally different physique from the last time I saw Bryson DeChambeau in the flesh. Yeah. He's really looking a lot, a lot leaner, still very strong. You can see the muscles bursting out the top of his back there, but he's lost a lot of body mass. He's also had some time out as well quite a while ago. He had that surgery in his hand and you know he's he's had to change a few things and probably not hit it as hard and naturally if you have surgery, especially in your hand, which is the only point of contact that obviously holds the club you probably won't have the same sort of strength in that grip. Right, he just looks like he's got the big dog out. This is what we came to see. This is the good stuff. Bryson with the driver always gets the crowds going, doesn't it, Insu? It does. I really don't want to say too much because I just want to hear the strike on this. The first time that Bryson's been back to the UK in quite some time. 
Welcome back, Bryson, to the rain and the cold. It looks like a steel shaft, doesn't it? Look at that. So it does. That's not something you see every day. <laughs> an, excite, an excited fan over on the right-hand side. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> showing that one. It is exciting to be here, to be honest. Look at this open. as well. <laughs> I think he's just got a <laughs> mouth full of... <laughs> Divot was it? <laughs> bit sandy, bit gritty. <laughs> Let's see if we can find out what happened there. You okay, Bryson? What happened there? <laughs> oh, before we'll let you have a little break before you hit this one. Okay. We just want to say hello and welcome back you? to the open. It's really yeah. great to see you here again. Thanks, glad to be here. Mm. Y'all doing good? Yeah, we're great. And uh, you know, this is such an exciting week. Some people say it's the best week of the year. The open <laughs> here in Hoylake as well. Great to be back. And what what have you made of it all so far? Well, it's a strategic golf course. It's a golf course where, depending on the wind, you got to take those bunkers on or uh, lay back and give yourself a long iron in. So it's, it's going to be a good test of golf. It's not going to run out. It's going to be um, wet, spinning everywhere. Well, sometimes uh, around the green, it's going to be a lot of skipping and rolling. But other than that, it's uh, going to be a good test. And on a scale of one to ten, uh, Bryson, how much do you love Lynx golf? Uh, I would say like a nine. It's it's a lot of fun. There are times where it's like. <laughs> Man, I just got really screwed, and that's that one. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. I played Royal Lytham St. Anne's around here pretty close. We actually played here for a practice round, um, so I got to see the course a long time ago. Internal OB, eh, some conversations. <laughs> that's, that's quirky. Yeah, conversations about that, but we all got to play it. We all got to we step up and hit a good shot. Yeah, good. What sort of shots do you think it demands the most out of your own game? Oh, just consistency and precision. Oh, it's, consistency and precision are, like, the most important things. Um, more here than ever. Um, you can't put yourself in bad bad spots if you do you're going to be chipping far away from the hole and uh you know having a tough time uh making some shots so it's even though there's some some room out here it's still diabolical and you got to be precise and strategic and think through the golf course which i like i actually like doing that i uh, played well at valderrama a couple weeks ago and um that's definitely a golf course you got to think through so hopefully that pays off here if there's someone that can think through things, we know it's you, Bryson. <laughs> or overthink it. Uh, listen, can, just finally, can you tell us about the set of your driver? Because, I mean, uh, we want to yeah. start with the grips. They're yeah. in, enormous. They're gigantic. I mean, yeah, I've been using Jumbo Max uh, since 2011. And then this head is actually not too much um, different than a, than a stock head. Um, just because I've been trying to slow down a little bit. The face technology is not there yet for any driver. Um, they, it's not built correctly mm. for the face curvature and whatnot. Uh, to support 190 ball speed and so wow. I kind of had to like hone back a little bit. I went through that whole experiment and obviously you can see how far offline I did certain shots and um, as I've honed back it's gotten a little bit better but uh, yeah some work needs to be done. Can someone just make a freaking driver with curvature correctly please <laughs> for 190 and up? You can make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, well. <laughs> I, I could. But it's a long process. To be honest drivers are super intricate to make and people don't realize how much stuff goes inside the head as well um but the next step for people to really gain a huge huge advantage is that curvature and i know they're talking about the ball and everything like that but you know um was it adam scott that talked about the driver may be getting smaller or whatever mm -hmm. more difficult yeah i mean back that, to the persimmons yeah yeah that would make it more difficult you know rather than a golf ball change but certainly if someone could build that before they rule change it it'd be really nice okay you heard it here first yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant well bryson listen we hope you have a cracking week and it's great to see you again great to see thank you for your time thank you. cheers bryson Super insightful. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Also, just watch how high he hovers that drive a good inch and a bit off the floor. Every single shot. That's and the rain is trickling back down. And here she comes. Pitter patter, soft toilet rain. Quite interesting just to seeing him. Bryson DeChambeau, really high ball flight though, isn't he? Yeah, definitely teeing that ball a little higher than usual, but I pointed it out moments ago, he's definitely hovering that club a good inch and a half above the ground because it's so high, and it just looks like he's setting it up near the heel as well, fucking the ball right to left. 
what you can see he's wiping the face of the driver every mm. time he hits the ball. What impact does water on the face have in terms of the flight? Spin, big time. So if you've got a bit of moisture either on the ball or on the club face, it's going to reduce the spin. It's going to hire a little bit fly. It's going to fly a little bit higher as well, and uh, just not exaggerate the movement of the shape as much. So definitely has a huge effect on ball flight for sure. Blether with him a few moments ago, and now we're watching him really cranking things up as Incy pointed out, hovering it way off the ground, which allows for a smoother takeaway. It was Katrina Matthew that taught me that trick, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah she, she encouraged me to do that, and I've done it ever since. And talking about having to dial his ball speed down, Incy, that's really interesting. You know, we can see obviously the physical changes he's made. He's, lost a lot of body mass but you never you never thought you'd hear a player talking about deliberately reducing mm. the ball speed well it's one of those things the harder you swing it the faster you swing it your worst ones are going to be even worse it's a little bit frustrated with that one yeah that's that's uh, that is a long way left which is an interesting point because we talked about the ball you know if you do change it and you hit it offline you're actually just not going to hit it offline as much so chances are with your bad shots you might Get, up, get away with it a little bit more often. Right, we're back down to Alison Whitaker's pal, Lucas Herbert. He's just hiding under the brolly there and it's always great to watch him. Come, let's go and take a little closer look. Let's see what we can see. That's a nice divot pattern, isn't it? And it's pretty impressive how many people you can stick under an umbrella. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> mini little house there. This looks like Fairly long iron in his hand. He's a flusher. Oof, that's an absolute stinger. I feel as though that was below 10 feet for a good second and a half. I mean, that was low to the ground. Rocking the tash as well, I like it. We'll leave Lucas in peace as we meander our way down. Great, they've got these bay numbers, and I believe we've got someone. Very interesting in Bay 2, a recent winner again on the DP World Tour, it's Rasmus Hoygaard. Or is so, it Nikolai? <laughs> <laughs> actually don't wanted to get a selfie there, Rinsy, don't I actually wanted me. to get a selfie with them earlier and just put it on socials and see if people could get who it is. But you can tell by the swing, can't you? You can tell the swing and also the, the, the more time you, you do spend with them, you do eventually start to notice the difference. I think I've just about got it down now. I say that, but I'm actually not sure who this is. This is Rasmus. It is definitely Rasmus, is it? This is definitely Rasmus. I always look at the caddies, but the caddies not around. Because <laughs> Rasmus got Tom Ailing on the bag, which makes it a lot easier. And as I say, great to see him, a winner once again on the DP World Tour. And I think it's time, Incy, that we go back inside for a little cup of tea and we'll get back to the commentary box with Mark Rowe and Simon Holmes. Yes, I think it is time you took a little break. That was sterling work from Iona and Incy down there in what is really quite grisly condition, Simon. Yeah, it's been a it's been a shame uh, with the weather just moving around. I think more than anything, just changing significantly the the, the way the golf course is going to play. But I guess that does make it a mystery for the players a little bit of what they're going to expect when they get out there. I mean, how about that? It was fascinating, wasn't it? With Bryson DeChambeau talking about the shape of the club face, talking about the modern driver there at 191 miles per hour ball speed. I have a similar problem, Simon, I have to say, you know, cracking club faces and problems at that ball speed, as you'd understand. Yeah, you are certainly very explosive, Mark. But uh, Bryson DeChambeau, you know, they call him the scientist and you can see what goes through his mind. So let's have a look, Rasmus. What a fantastic victory he had made in Himaland. Yeah, I mean, it was it, mega, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, long playoff. Is it six holes, I think, yeah. in the end? Yeah, and... Uh, so, yeah, yeah. It, it just, it's just getting it done, right? So here we've got some of the data. Um, interesting, you, if we turn around a little bit, he's being coached by Soren Hansen, who was an excellent player. There he is. 
under the hat, cleaning up the balls. I here's, used to coach Soren. I'm just about to say, here's an interesting thing. Yeah. You wouldn't believe this. You have coached him. I coached him for a year and a half short game. Yeah. So coaches coaching coaches, coaching modern day players. Yeah. How good is that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great, isn't it? It's, I think it ages us, Mark. So anyway, so Rasmus. Let's have a look. It's really a controlled rhythm, isn't it? It's not the not at all the thrash rhythm that you see. There is Soren with the holding the towel there behind yeah. him, and alongside him is I think Tony Johnston hiding under that cap. Am I right? Hey, oh, see, so you're having yeah. to look. Yeah, look, that was a good shout, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very good. Lurking, look at Soren smiling away. Yeah. Still as handsome as ever, isn't he? He's a good Now, he man. was a ball striker. Yeah, he I'll was. I'll tell you what, you know, you want a coach, a coach that could strike the ball yeah. well, he was an ace ball striker. Yeah, but can you not see in the in the Soren Hansen swing, the Rasmus Hoygaard swing? See that pace? Yeah, yeah, That's the pace nearly, is that. Yeah, like, correct. That? It's like, Great shout. It's like, an Im, it's like an imprint from Soren. So maybe that was the, the thing that he copied. That is, if you ever get a chance or you're looking on YouTube or something like that, one of the channels to go back, to see if you can find Soren Hansen's golf swing. And it's going to be a carbon copy of that tempo pace. Fiddling there, I guess, with, a, with yeah. the track man or the, the, so, the, the fly monitor just to checking the numbers i mean i know you're an absolute genius as that i've learned to switch one on recently so i'm very proud of myself yeah so so the thing with the data the data is just to give you feedback on what you're doing the computer cannot tell you what to do it's just a case of okay this is my feel is it validated okay molinari working hard let's see what's happening yeah we we watched him really struggling So, Open Champion at Carnoustie, playing against head-to-head -head Tiger Woods, what a way to do it. Francesco Molinari, I was talking to Dennis Pugh, who's thankfully on the men, so we send our best wishes to Dennis. Molinari going through a little bit of a change, having moved back to Italy from LA, having, you know, working on his game. Not happy with his ball speed, not happy at the moment with the strike. So the driver not behaving for Molinari. He's been grinding it out there. Working a little bit. There's Torbjörn Alderson as well. Yeah, the beat. Strong player. Quite a fun section of the range, actually. You kind know, of got a little it's... European corner yeah, yeah, down got, there. You've got Torbjorn there, you've got Pablo, Lara Thabalin, you've got Grant Berry behind, he'll be providing jokes and humour, and Frankie yeah. there looking very relaxed. Yeah, let's, let's move across perhaps down to uh, Rasmus, take a look at that swing. It's really a fantastic sort of tempo to copy, just working through. He's quite a tall guy. You know, look at look at the routine. The routine, you know, if you see that sort of build-up, that's like an Ernie Els kind of build-up, isn't it? It's like slow. The backswing completes. There was a little drop underneath the plane there, so you wouldn't like that. You talked about the win in uh, Made in Himmerland in great style in the playoff. Do you think that's enough for him to get in the Ryder Cup team, Marcus Simone? And do you think if Nikolai showed a little bit of form now that they're both picks? If they don't get an automatically, obviously. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. You know, what will Luke Donald have? What what what, what options will Luke Donald have? What's in the bank and what, what can he bring in? I think he's still got plenty of options. So that is a beautiful swing, isn't it? Look at that. So really based around very elegant, good geometry, good angles, right? I mean, making, honestly, making the game look easy at times with such lazy, effortless length and club head speed. 
That's what Molinari is searching for, that little bit extra. You look at the two swings there, but you do see a far greater fluidity in the swing of Rasmus. He kind of knows where it is in the tail. He knows yeah. exactly where he's not searching for a position in so the takeaway, is he? Look at this. Kind of really matched up. You can see those arms are not rotating through the ball. Those arms are kind of holding the face square and the body's rotation squares up the face. Let's keep this angle here and just see if we can show you that. So, Soren Hansen, former excellent winner on the DP World Player. Ryder Cup player as well, Simon, yeah. He was in his hair, he was top 50 in the world as well, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a really talented player. So. Nice, look at those arms hanging. Like the, That's a tension-free posture, isn't it? And then up, and hips take you through. And you can see there the way those forearms are kind of not rotated. They have, look at that club face matching up to his um, the angle of his sternum to the ground there. So really trying to feel as though the body is the engine and the arms and the hands are just kind of passengers to the chest and hips rotation. So the iPad is going to take a little break. Who's the better player, in your opinion, the, of the two, of the twins? Oh, I think Rasmus... I think Rasmus is maybe meaner from the point of view of, of like, he's got a real grit. I, I think they are both excellent, but I... And I, and I may be... I may be I don't know Nikolai as well as I know Rasmus. I know Rasmus pretty well, because I know Soren so well. So let's just have a look here. So load. Yeah, so the thing that I like in the sequence, so if you get a chance and you're watching these swings this week, when the ribs or when the chest stops finishing, what you don't want to have happening is the hands to keep running on, right? So they, they run into a space that's behind you that you then can't find back again. So. If you watch the way that the chest turns to the top, so it's the chest that the engine's are right, and loaded up, and the club doesn't keep going. So the body turn really controls the length and the positioning of the arms and the club. Yeah, just slow down. So I'm, I'm writing this down as you're saying it. I'm, I'm making <laughs> notes. You just, you just slow down so I can make sure I don't miss any of it. <laughs> That's right. Here we go. So here we go. Arms are kind of hanging there, right? And he, look at him rehearsing. So what he's rehearsing is the feeling through the ball. So if it's windy, a nice, long, slow swing is handy. So watch this, chest turns to the top and the hips accelerate through. So again, when the arms come down, those arms have not released and rolled over. So look at that fit, look in the position of that club face there, perfect by our I camera. Li I like there. the follow through and the finish, and, and it's kind of got that little, almost old fashioned reverse C to it. It's so kind of like, you remember Johnny Miller used yeah. to swing it, kind of that willowy feel to yeah. it. And he's just rehearsing that again there. So this is really a great swing for us to learn from it. This is a swing sort of where you, you look at Bryson's swing and you go, okay, that's amazing, but I can't learn anything from that. I can't copy that. So there. And the body turns. See how he's still pitched over. So like his bottom of his back's on a wall. The face is really controlled. This is a swing really on the on the way up. I think, Mark. Yeah, I have to disagree slightly with you because when you say you you know you can't Ricky. learn anything from Bryson DeChambeau, you could swing like him because you're built physically very much like Bryson DeChambeau. You know what, Mark? I I do appreciate that. I'm I uh, I do feel just like one of those Spartans, but then it's how you feel and the reality is not always matched up but thanks uh, very much I love what you said about posture there because one thing I always say to so many players that ask you know not for quick tips but can give you give give you a tip I say work on your balance work yeah. on your posture work on feeling very relaxed before you hit the golf ball and you say his arms hang so beautifully he looks so relaxed yeah makes the takeaway so much easier yeah yeah and then you know He's building a swing that's going to handle maybe a very intense nine holes on Sunday where he has his chance to play for his first major, his first of, of the sort of really big event. So it's a shame a little bit about the weather, but I think the, you know, the work goes on for team 
but the weather's the right. weather is te I mean that wind is 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 a, a wind you know off the left a little bit but I tell you what the rain is driving I mean it's driving it's unpleasant conditions and yet the range is full there yeah. are so many players that work in and grinding on their games and yet it's unpleasant I would be having a cup of tea in the caddy lounge just off the side I, I was never that dedicated unfortunately I think though yours your swing was was really unique um, and it, and it was your swing and you probably didn't need to practice it that much so here we go. Let's have a look. Not really sure what to make of that. No, was it, was it, was it was a little compliment was, in there somewhere. It was a politician's answer. It, it was gobbledygook, wasn't it? So, Soren just working through here. I'd say these are like maybe just little cruise seven irons, trying not to keep, um, not to get too much spin, not to get too much launch. So the guys working kind of like around an 88 apex. That's, that's definitely going to be a lower, that's kind of a sawn off finish. And then I think obviously probably a little bit of speed. You maybe lose a bit of speed with your waterproof tr <laughs> on. And so you're thinking, cold. you're thinking, I'm looking at, I'm looking at it now, 185. 133 miles an hour. You think that's seven iron? I think it probably is, isn't yeah, it? I mean, seven, seven iron modern game. You know, I think that's about. You know, that 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 might have been a softer six. And then obviously, you know, the the lofts have changed around it. it what you really should do is you should stop having seven iron, six iron, five iron, etc. You just put what the loft is on the thing. So let's have a look at Rasmus's pattern of shots here. That's what he's been working on. It's cool to see, isn't it? fireworks show I tell you what look at if you take, you take a line and you can you take it up the left and the right side of the of the landing spots and I tell you what he's not got much variance in terms of where no. he's landed and that's very impressive yeah he was he's really good I was super impressed super super impressed by his game yeah just kind of you know read you off let's let's suppose I'm just gonna read you off some some standard <laughs> stats uh, not you're not your extreme players. So uh, nine iron, kind of like a 155. Eight iron, like a a 170 shot. Seven iron, like a 185. Six iron, 200. Five iron, 215. Four iron, 230. That's kind of that's kind of a benchmark of of what you're looking at in terms of yards of carry. Um, yeah, the game has moved on, hasn't it? Balls faster, players are fitter, stronger. Equipment is really fine-tuned. Here we go. High hands. Look at the hip rotation there. Amazing. Look how con sort of all the way through his hips have turned 30 <laughs> degrees through. Contender this week. I like it. I really do. I fancy his, his chances big time. I think he's one of the one of the super super players coming up. And I, and I think the other thing is he's decided. That he's this is his thing. He's going to be. He doesn't have any other distractions. He's this is a this is a very focused guy, and Soren Hansen's a really good player, to, a really good coach to have on the back because he's all about the performance under pressure. Yeah, and the other thing I think you want from a coach is somebody that understands the game really, really well and is able to say the right things at the right time. That's hugely important. Hard to keep the grips dry out there right now. Look at that rain lashing down. But you're going to have that this week. You're going to have all seasons in in a four-day segment. There's going to be wind. There's going to be rain. Yeah. And hopefully the sun will come out as well. It's going to be a typical Lynx week. Look so you're going, to have to, yeah. you're going to have to go through all the conditions, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, and, and to be patient and to keep your head on. It's, it's a game of managing mistakes. So... We're going to wish Rasmus well, and we send you our congratulations for an amazing victory in your homeland. Hard to do. Molinari, come on, grinding, fighting it. Still, so I'm loving that Callaway bag in the background there. It's got the Beatles on there. It's a fabulous thing. That they, the, the manufacturers, they make special bags for the majors. They're really prized items to have. Yeah. The, 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 if you're if you're coming to the range, just the interaction between the manufacturers and the players is so interesting. So, Rasmus has kind of looked as though he's now back on the wedge shot, just working his feel, working his carry, checking on the numbers. So let's have a little walk down for Molinari, Larathabal, Torbjorn Olsson. Uh, 
Uh, here we go, Sahith Thagala. Be great to see him play well. He's got a lot of different ball flights. Have a look at this. Watch this action here. Look at a little knee dip. Quirky, isn't it? Quirky, Quirky. swing. Quirky. Watch. Here we go. And then hips drop. Really bounces it through it. Was absolutely one of the top amateurs to come out of um, where would he in university in California? Oh dear. Well, you think about oh that. He's been dear. knocking on the door, hasn't he? This year, Big PGA time. Tour all He's the time. He's had a great good short chance. game. Great short and game. Just a good scrambler, almost like a sort of a a sevy type of game in the sense that he's, you know, he's, he's a little bit wilder, and he's a little bit of a of a sort of a fighter, and he can have all sorts of different. You're moves, looking so. for his university in California, aren't you? Oh, I've lost university it. of California. No, but it's at something. He's quirky. I like him. I like him. He's got great attitude. He's, he's always happy. He's smiling. He's loving being out on tour, on the PGA Tour, and he can play. He's got some game. And I tell you, watch him around the greens because he's got some immense man imagination and touch and feel. Oh. Pepperdine University. I'd just like to apologize to Pepperdine for the long delay in remembering his university. He was an absolutely standout amateur, amazing player. So, so you can be forgiven for that because I know a few of the American universities that have played, but I've never heard of Pepperdine. Yeah, yeah, he, he sort of put Pepperdine golf program on the map. So let's have a look at his game. That left wrist takes a lot of pressure. Almost like the, the, the head goes one way the hands go another it all finishes up so plenty of speed in so he's just kind of hitting through a little like one of his hybrids there maybe what, a not, driving iron he's not just warm thinking out there about he's just got a shirt on i mean he's he's really braving it out he's, there isn't he's he? cool so he's cool here we go so up and watch the legs watch the lower body watch the knees drive towards the hole and then bounce it is a bounce, look isn't at, it? Look, it's like look at the different shapes that he's hitting there. He's kind of hitting like low sliders. It's like a little jig in the middle of his swing. Yeah, isn't he's, got, it? A, he's like got a little bounce. He used to, he used to have a, like a little knee dip there. He's kind of lost that. So here we go. Watch those knees. So initiates the, like a double knee drive. Both knees going towards the hole. I mean, look on the right side of the screen there. He's, he's hit left to right, right to left. He's created almost a love heart on the screen. Did you see that? I didn't catch that, but I just think that's so lovely that that's what it struck you as, Mark. So here we go. Let's see. A little bit more chest taking it away. But watch the lower body. Watch the feet in the lower body. Drive towards the hole. another little slider so this is maybe a tee shot that he's thinking about out on the golf course I bet and he's it, just I, working it out i bet you i bet you he can break dance i bet you he can body pop and break dance because when you see him just through impact he's got he's got a little bit of a break dance in here watch this he hits here it. we go now watch the legs drive so they're the hands and as we slow this down and keep it moving those knees drop height drives forward and then pops back up Boom there. Talking about that lunch, weren't you that poppy? But look at the knees now. Look at the bend in the yeah. knees. And now look at that. I bet he could throw some sh some shapes on the dance floor, you know. I, I, I seriously think so. I think so. that's probably going to be like more your department, Mark. I know you're very keen on... Um, I can moonwalk. I, that's great. Okay. So different conditions than you'd normally find in California at Pepperdine at Pepperdine University so interesting to check in with Sir Heath just now cooling down I would say working through he's not, not going to warm up out there is he it's good Mark here we go our buddy Peter Finch just getting a bit of chat going researching it with some of the guys down there So knees just kind of moving around, even the posture. Picturing a shot here. You can see those legs really loose. 
like it looks like there's a lot of sort of WD-40 in those joints, doesn't there, Mark? You know, he's so limber, isn't he? He's he limber. He's limber. So nice high hand position on top. So not one of those. There we go. It's a great face, isn't it? You come from California. You play Scotland. You come to the Open. And you just think this was the home of golf. Like, what was everybody thinking about? So, nice hand position there. That little bit of taping on the right, left wrist just to help that he's had injuries there. The knees kind of start the drive and then it all looks as though it's going to fall into the ground and it just reverses and goes vertical on you. Um, great timing. Very interesting. I love the way that you demonstrate, obviously people at home can't see this, the way you demonstrate the golf swing as you're talking about it. I'm fascinated. Yeah, you know what? Um, oh, golf swings. I mean, when you're sort of a golf coach, a nowadays golf coach is a is an ex is a is not an expert probably in anything, but it has to have a very good knowledge of how bodies move, optimized bodies move. There's a lot more components now um, ad added in. So, yeah. Oh, now there's a pra there's a practice machine. Yeah, so it is interesting, you know, I think for the viewers, they must think, like, what are they doing? Why don't they go inside? Because they have to get ready to play in this kind of conditions. You're going to have, you could have a nine holes like this. So sometimes even guys will go, OK, listen, it's going to rain tomorrow afternoon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of work in my waterproofs just to get the feel for that and just have a look and see what it impacts. So Alex Noren, would you put him as Ryder Cup hero? Well, in uh, uh, France. Yeah, I mean, he, it he did. Victory, yeah, it? it was. It was a tremendous victory. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Alex Noren. Um, I've watched him grind himself into a world class player. There you are, world number 67. He has been higher than that, and he will be higher again than that. Um, yeah, no, he. You know, some players are incredibly naturally talented, and you look at them, you think, but it just. But he's worked hard on his set. He's always grinding. By his own admission, doesn't even like to see his own golf swing, Simon. So, I think Dai is braving the elements down there and going to find something interesting for us to see. Dai, what have you found? I could for sure do it, but I feel like as long as I'm we, warm. We're just having a chat, actually. Sahith and I are chatting about waterproofs, and we've, we've been on you for quite a while. And, we, and yeah, why, why don't you wear a waterproof top? Yeah, um, <laughs> I was just saying it was because um, I've tried every kind of waterproofs, and I like the thin ones, the half sleeve one especially, but especially when it's not that cold right now, it's probably 60, 62 degrees. Um, I just don't want to hear it. My first move away from the ball is a little bit of a slide, so I hear the crunch, and I'm like, oh, no. So I don't like that part So it's the screen. sound that you don't it's like. It's the sound more than the feel. Like, obviously, wow. I think everyone would agree they would rather not play with waterproofs just because of the... It, you feel a little bit more restricted. 100%, yeah. Um, I mean, it was Payne, Payne Stewart, wasn't it, who was famous for ripping the sleeves off? Oh, yeah, off. just the... What, he went like vest almost, right? Yeah, he did, yeah. Or it was like just a baby sleeve, which is brilliant. <laughs> but you're absolutely drenched right now. I but that, but drenched. that's okay. So, so what, you know, over the next yeah. few days, yeah. are you going to be wearing any waterproofs? I will. Ha I will have it in my bag. Okay. Um, the pants I wear more than the than the top for sure. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if I'll be wearing it. I figured this is if I can just get some practice in in this weather. It'll feel easy when I'm when yeah. I'm actually out there for the tournament. That's kind of my reasoning behind it. Yeah, totally. Uh, coming to the Open Championship for for the second time, made yeah. your debut last year at St Andrews. Wow, what a, what a start to your Open career at St Andrews. Yeah, so that was my first major as a pro too, was at St Andrews last Amazing. year. So, um, yeah, pretty special. Probably spoiled for that to be my first one. I don't know how it gets any better than that, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited for this year again. I feel. I know it's only my second year, but I feel more. I've already learned so much just from last year, so I'm excited to kind of put that 
into use this year, I suppose. So tell us, the guys in the commentary box have been waxing lyrical about how, how great your game is right now and what yeah. kind of position it is. Just tell us what, what have you learned in the last 12 months about your game and about Lynx Golf? Yeah, I, well, one, I just love Lynx Golf. So I've played very little of it in my life. Last year was my first real Lynx Golf with firm conditions, and it wasn't very windy last year at all, and that's why the scores were low, but it just allows me to be more creative. Um, it feels like I'm in a sandbox of sorts where I can kind of do whatever I want with all my clubs. And as long as I'm still hitting the right shot or trying to hit it to the right areas, uh, it just lets me be more creative, kind of use the slopes, not just hit it high and soft like a lot of the mainline courses we play, obviously. And um, it's just so much fun. Like I feel my caddy Carl actually needs to like, he, he calms me down a little bit. Where, where is your caddy? Here. Where is he? He's walking the golf course Oh, right okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, the game's been feeling really good. Um, played great this year. Last few months just haven't scored great, but game still feels really good. And I'm excited for this week just because, again, I feel like I have a little more freedom. I'm not, not as nervous as I was last year for sure. Um, but yeah, I just feel like I'm in a good spot. Absolutely. You had some, some great results of late. And any change to your bag? What's in your bag for this week? Yeah, the only, the only thing, I, I'm probably in the minority here, which I don't change anything, but this week I... I have a potential new two iron in the bag, yeah. <laughs> um, just because there's so few drivers out here. But um, it's basically the same as my current two iron. Instead of a graphite shaft, it's a, it's a metal, it's a steel shaft. So okay. just for a little tighter ball flight. Should just um, take a quick look at it. it can yeah, you, yeah. If we don't want to get you back, I've got my sure. umbrella over it. It's yeah. it's just so so difficult when it rains, isn't it? To like sort everything yeah. out, get everything dry. You got to rely on your caddy a lot. Oh, the caddy is a lifesaver. Totally. But, uh, he's a pretty decent caddy, isn't he? He's awesome. He, Juju, my girlfriend, who's on the bag for this practice session, she's just like, how does he do this every time? I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to do it. Oh, she's been on it's the bag for job. this practice session? Just just shipping and coming here. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Taking this place. Yeah. Um, but this is my normal three iron graphite right. shaft, yeah. a little bit thicker, older model, and then this is the... Let's have a look it at says that one. Three, it says three on the top, but it's actually okay, have you two. got that one? There we go. Oh. It it's says eight, three, but it's two. Is that not going to confuse you guys? No, no. Well, I, I wouldn't play both of these. No. It's either this one or this one. Okay. Um, and I don't have another three iron. It's just this one. Um, but this is the same iron shaft as my other clubs, and this is the same shaft as my hybrid. Right. So it spins you, you're a like little a bit, bit down. You're a bit of a kid in a sweet shop, aren't you, right now? Yeah. Like trying, um, trying new great. clubs and being well, creative. To be honest, it's just... I. You can ask the ping guys that are here. I don't. I hate changing clubs. Like I just wanted to stick to my own. But this week I feel like it was. You know, I'd be doing myself a disservice if I didn't try a new, just a way to get it in the fairway as easy as possible. Yeah. And that's why we kind of built up this new two iron. Oh. Um, I need a lot of cajoling to to put new clubs in the bag. Usually, I'm just like I, I found what I'm good with. Like I'm comfortable with that. Uh -huh. um, but it is fun. It's it's a lot of fun. I, Not I, everybody loves getting new clubs. Totally. totally. Yeah. I I love hearing about the fact that you, you don't like wearing waterproofs and you don't like changing your clubs. You, you're quite specific with the way yeah. you operate then. Yeah, definitely quite specific. Well, quite specific to a certain degree. I'm not um, like crazy specific about the don't way Don't worry, I most of us are stuff, that are but, doing this show. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just... I don't know, I feel like if it's working, like why change it kind of thing. That's kind of my thing yeah. with the clubs at least. And you're teeing off with Dustin Johnson. Yeah. Remind yeah. us your tea time. I don't know. <laughs> Someone can them, tell I me in my ear, that'd be Eastern great. Time. I think I'm- Oh, it's 1.26. 1.26 yeah. and 8.25 the next day, or 8.35, yeah. 8.35 the next on Friday yeah. and 1.36 on Thursday. So playing with DJ, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's great. I've uh, I've never played with DJ in a tournament. I've played with him in a couple practice rounds, but obviously he's one of the best players on the planet. And I'm still at a stage where I'm kind of learning and still getting comfortable playing with some of the top guys. And obviously I want to get there myself at some point, but um, It'll be a lot of fun. It's always good to play with the legend. And he's he's easily in the discussion for one of the best golfers of our generation. So it's, it'll be it'll be great. It'll be great. And I know he's super chill too. I've he's he's been great with me the last few times we've we've played and yeah. It's really important though, isn't it, when you're playing with people, you want that sort of good vibe from somebody, good energy to be around. Yeah, yeah. Any, any golfers that really stress you out when you're playing with them? Honestly no. <laughs> I'm I, I feel like I'm a bit of a chiller. I, I have 
my group of friends that I play a lot of practice rounds with and hang around, but I'm, I get along with mostly everyone. And I feel like I get a good, decent read on who's chatty and who isn't. I, I'm not very chatty, but you know, I like to ask some questions, keep it light. Um, but no, nobody, I, honestly, everyone's been great. I know there's been a lot of drama about all the, the live, PGA Tour, all that jazz, but honestly, all the players are, are still very nice to each other. I feel like it's, it's kind of a fallacy that there's beef going on. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, everyone's been great to me. Uh, that's really good to hear. And what about being here in the UK, the fans and the golf courses? What have you made of the place? Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, this is my first time in England in general. I've never been to the country, so that's been cool. Just kind of exploring around. I know this isn't Liverpool, but just the Hoy Lake and West Kirby area has been really nice. People are nice. The golf fans, I mean, I played with Ricky, JT, and Max in a practice round today, and there's thousands of people watching, which is, <laughs> which is cool. And and uh yeah the fans are awesome um but yeah the experience has been awesome Amazing. uh a lot of a lot of like just they just love golf yeah. um they just love golf out here they're out here sitting watching us and while it's raining and cold so um i just admire their love for the game i mean i'd probably do the same thing we're all a lot of the players are golf sickos too but uh <laughs> no it's great well, we're used to a lot of rain in the north. Yeah. I'm, I'm from this area, yeah. so we're, we're, rain is just part of our DNA, really. Yeah. So, but it's, it's, not, it's not of mine. Yeah. But, uh, well, I no, like it. Welcome and yeah. uh, listen. Thanks so much for talking yeah. to us uh, today, Tuesday. What are you exactly doing here yeah. in the range? Um, right now, just kind of loosening up again post round. Just I hit I hit it pretty well the last couple of days, so just trying to keep some of the same feels. Um, kind of the Scotty method, where even if he goes plays a great round. It's not you need, you need to still put the work in to yeah. to keep that form so just more of that just a maintenance kind of day play nine i've already seen the front nine twice and seen the back nine once playing the back nine tomorrow so um yeah well game all game feels all good tomorrow is going to be more of a chill day for sure today i got here here pretty early i think it's probably 4 4 30 now so i'm gonna head yeah. out um but yeah it's been a good day Great, sir. Thank yeah. you so much. Good luck yeah. on uh, Thursday at 1.26. 1 Don't miss your tea time, whatever I'm you do. Not. I know you won't. I might walk. Shoot, she knows. Do you need help now? Can I help you with anything? It's all good. You're good? Okay. This is it. I mean, I could never be a caddy. There's too much to do, isn't there? There is it's too so much hard. to do. It's so hard. Oh, you've got the towel in the bag as well. Yeah. I need yeah. to wipe this guy down. Just yeah. let it get soaked. I think every amateur golfer at home watching can relate to you holding an umbrella right now yeah. with a towel, with loads of equipment. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Good Thank luck, buddy. You. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, let's head to a quick break. We'll be back after this. We're told that the weather forecast for today is kind early on for the possibility of some wet weather later. I think Mother Nature kicks it up another notch. Quite extraordinary. What a moment. I've got to say, if you saw that interview with Sahith Tagala, I will be forever a Sahith Tagala fan. What a charming man. Yeah, cool. Very, very uh, soft gentleman is what I would call him. Very sweet. Uh, it was a great interview, wasn't it? And I disagree. I think Di would make a great caddy. I mean, she had all sorts going on there, didn't she? She got the right angle in the end. Di is great. She's great. But Sahith, what a charming man. I mean, just interesting for us to get into the mindset it's like just this is a massive adventure for him so Norren Alex yeah. Norren Alex Norren now here's a question for you, you top got. coach Simon yeah, Holmes yeah. this is not a natural golf swing is it let's be honest no this is a guy who's kind of fought his instincts so Alex's swing used to have kind of like a reroute and so what happened was when Alex got to the top of his backswing his first move yeah 
was kind of like a push of his hips in towards the target. His chest rose away from the ball and he played from the inside to the outside with a, with a kind of a draw. And so you can hit some bad shots doing that. So what Alex did was to really kind of completely reroute his swing and in the sort of a, with a Hogan mentality of a dig it out of the dirt, Alex Noren has actually really probably hit like almost like a VJ Singh kind of practice mantra. There were pictures of his hands. Do you remember that, Mark? Just like ripped to pieces with blisters, his hands as he fought to change his club head path on his downswing. So Alex going through perhaps a bit of a technical chat. So Alex is cruising, Bryson in the side there, working out. Matt Belsham yeah. there on the left-hand side. Matt Wallace's coach works with a, a lot of the top players. It looks like he's waiting to hit one of his hybrids now, Alex Noren. Just looking again at the golf bag and the head covers. They, the manufacturers make the special bags, special head covers. A friend of mine over in Belgium, Jonathan, messaged me last night. He said, please, can you get me one of those Callaway special head covers? But you can't. I'd have to go and steal one, wouldn't I? You can't buy them. He doesn't understand that. He said, can you get no, me one? No, limited, I, yeah, yeah, limited edition. I you, mean, I'm just you, wondering which, which would be the best player maybe to sneak by and take it off his driver. Do you know what, Roey? We could we can throw in, we could get sort of perhaps die to throw a dis distraction. Peter Finch to take the guy down and you run in and grab it. Let me let me think it out. We'll get, figure get it out. Get me a plan to get yeah, my mate Jonathan one of those driver just, head covers. So Bryson DeChambeau still working. You know, when we saw Bryson earlier, I couldn't believe I think physically he looks amazing now. I mean he bulked up to a point where I thought, what are you doing? Yeah. And then now I look at him and now he looks like a I mean seriously like a proper athlete. He looks ripped, doesn't he? Yeah, it was funny, you know, I was speaking to some of the guys in Puma and they just said, you know what, he, he couldn't possibly eat. He couldn't maintain the diet that he needed well, to you, do the training. Do. Um I'm he says more protein. I'm going I'm carbo loading. So here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, there she is, back again. In she's in. Oh, she's out. She's in. And now I think this is Di going, listen, hi, hi. Listen, Alex, is there any chance we could just... Look, oh, th there we go. Oh, she's found. She's got him. She's got it. She's got her man. I have. I have. We're just we're sort of drying off. The umbrellas have gone. Alex, great to see you here on the range. How, how are you? Good. Thank Good. you. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. How, how long have you been here? On the range? Well, no, no. in this part. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been on the range? Um, that's a good question. That's yeah. what most people ask me. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I've been in Liverpool since Sunday. Okay. It was, um, we played Sunday. I've, I don't think I've ever been this long at a major before it starts. Okay. So even my wife said, good luck tomorrow. I'm like, it's still, it's, <laughs> it's, not, even, it's not even game time tomorrow. So yeah, but it's, it's nice. I, my coach is here yeah. and it's, it's nice. Yeah. He, he didn't want to be on camera. Should we get him on camera? Wow, well, he's never. He's, he's over there yeah. at the, on the end. And the third guy there. Yeah. He, does, he didn't want to get on because his modeling contract. Is because of your modeling contract, <laughs> you don't want to be on camera, but you are, you're going global now. <laughs> Looking great from a distance. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're being cheeky, a little bit cheeky. Um, Peace and I were just talking about your game over the years. Uh, Ten DP World Tour victories, uh, previously European Tour, of course. Um, how are you right now? What, what's going on with your game? Yeah, it's... Um, well, I had a good fall of this season and then a bad spring and then a little bit better maybe last month and a half. Um, it's been better. Um, and it's, you know, the game is up, it's up and down, but it's um, definitely better at playing better, you know, had a good finish in, well, decent finish in Detroit, a um, little bit better before that in Sweden. Uh, it's and definitely better, so better in practice, better in, you know, when I go out and play practice rounds, yeah, I, can, I can definitely see improvement, and now I just have to kind of get the uh, improvement on the, in the, in the tournaments too, especially the bigger ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're good in Lynx conditions. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. coming back to to a Lynx golf course yeah. here at Royal Liverpool. And um, how many times have you played this course? I've never played this before. I missed this one in 14. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, no, I love I love links, and I think I had the most successful success in my life on links. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, yeah, it it's just fun because you can hit different shots. It it doesn't require just one shot. Yeah. And then, and even if you miss the fairways, uh, which we do sometimes <laughs> as pros, uh, you can still get it on the green. You can chase it up. You can. So it's very sort of opportunity golf. There's still an opportunity to make birdie, even though maybe you hit one offline or even here you can go for drivers even not trying maybe to hit the fairway but you hit a certain part of the rough and you have a wedge in into greens instead of a maybe a seven iron from the fairway so yeah it's yeah, yeah i was gonna say we've heard a lot of players talking about different strategies about to use here but a lot of players saying oh we're just going to be hitting irons mostly other yeah. players saying they're going to bomb it over yeah. when you went out there what was your kind of vibe yeah but i think some of the, these bunkers are so penal. Yeah. So, so we were looking with you know a lot of like hybrids of two irons for people. There, you have to still hit a good shot to find the fairway. It's not like some courses where it's a big fairway for a two iron and you have a go at it with driver and it narrows up. Here it's almost the opposite. So, so it narrow, it's pretty narrow to hit the two iron, yeah. and you need to hit a good shot to even find the fairway. And if you do flight it. it different way than you want to you might end up in one of those bunkers so um, so we hit a lot of shots even on cross holes where you try to hit the fairway but even the best of the shots you can hit is landing on the fairway and maybe trickling over in the rough and and you have to be very unlucky to get a bad bad lie mm. to not hit a wedge on the green um, definitely like then it's gonna change with the wind every hole is different I've played three rounds now it's every every day has been different so. yeah I was gonna say the wind today is completely opposite yeah. to what it was yesterday mm -hmm. and that's the thing with around this area it can switch yeah. so fast yeah. it's yeah. unbelievable it really can and, you know coming off that de estuary when yeah. you come back uh, 11 12 13 yeah. Um, it, it's you know it's not easy to figure out is it no so like 10 the first day we hit three wood yeah. Uh, sort of a short iron, you know, you can hit a yes. short iron in, well, eight iron Tigers, maybe. Tigers hole from 2006. Yeah, yeah. and then, then today I hit driver in, straight into the wind in the morning, driver and then hybrid, and we had like 220. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's very different. So, and then, and then you can almost reach the green on a little, is it 11? No? Yes. Yeah. P uh, punch bowl punch is 11. Yeah. yeah. So you can yeah. almost reach the green and, and it, it, it's fun, you know, I, I think it's a great course. I, yeah, I mean, f fun is a, is one word. Yeah. Uh, it's character building as well, Pete, isn't it? Yeah. My goodness, you've well, grown up in this part of the world. It's uh, it, it's just a great landscape as well for golf, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of good courses around here, but one thing which sets this course apart, maybe from some of the others, is I don't know what you found, Alex, but it seems to be quite a fair test. You know, it, it's not overly tricked up. No, so like the fairways are fairly flat where you hit it. And like you said, it's it's pretty fair, I would mm -hmm. say. And but but uh, yeah, the big thing it plays a bit like we play how we play uh, uh, no uh, Carnoustie yeah. at the Dunne Link. So it's like it's tough and it's pretty Gnarly. long. Yeah, but the rough is not crazy high. So some somewhere you can you can take advantage. And I, I I'm betting Gallic like Rory is going to hit a lot of drives here because yeah. you you can take advantage and. Uh, and then some holes you gotta you gotta be smart yeah. and you could probably even play like you know not even trying to hit fairways on like 16 i tried today i tried to miss the fairways fairway on purpose you know because you you do it's so much easier landing area than trying to kind of stick it in between all the bunkers so it's uh, you're gonna see a lot of different golf and yeah we're going to yeah. see hopefully a lot of smart play from you yeah. plotting your way yeah. round. And anything that's different in the bag? No, no same, same stuff. I I tried to talk my my caddy into two iron, but he dismissed it oh, straight okay. away. Okay. So. Sahith was just showing his 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 two iron, yeah. uh, but you, what, why has he dismissed it? Oh, because I like the hybrid and I can hit it quite low if I want to. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. That's okay. it's I I think the uh, Callaway talk probably wouldn't be too displeased with that because what everyone I've been chatting to they've been wiped out of long lines <laughs> so, really? there, there are none left, none left no. they're all gone <laughs> gosh I wanted one oh, no, that's shame. what they say when you guys come and then yeah, we got some oh, oh, we got some oh we just in the yeah just no. need to be a pro golfer no. basically listen thanks so much for your time looking Thank very you. smart as if well you, looking look, great yeah look 
Uh, Admiral, very English, isn't it? Ah, marvellous. Yeah, you're off at 12.36 on Thursday, playing with, I've just been told, and I'm hopefully going to be reminded, Corey Connors and Billy Horschel. What a fun group. Yeah, great. great. How are you going to plan your morning? Uh, When are you going to come here to the range? Um, I'll come here probably, I started to practice like an hour and a half before. Yeah. Putting, chipping, hitting, a little bit of putting and then play. So to everybody at home who's watching, who plays at their golf club, probably turns up seven minutes before their tea time, message to you all, an hour and a half, take note, this is why you're so good. And tell your wife or your husband you have to have that hour and a half before. (laughs) And And afterwards afterwards as well. well. You turned up on Sunday, so you're taking this to a whole extreme (laughs) level. This is the longest major ever. Listen, we hope you see right. to see you at the weekend as well. Good Thank luck. You. Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for your time, bud. Thank you. What a shake. Right, 15, we're off to. And uh, we're going to go this, this way, way to yeah. Major Champ, Stuart Sink, as we pass uh, Bryson to Sean Bow. Tell you what, Alex Norham, Billy Horshaw, and Corey Connors, if you, you want like to see, if you want to see some good iron striking, follow that group. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Alex is my hero. I play with him in the um, BMW Celebrity Pro app. You didn't mention that. Yeah, I know. I was too emb- embarrassed. I mean, I didn't. Too... <laughs> I'm okay. going to come on. Let's no, go no, 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 no. Alex, Alex, just just wondered if you remember that you you guys played together. Pete was slightly embarrassed, but you did you did remember. You see? Yeah. Yeah. yeah how was his game? Yesterday. Oh, yeah. you know each other. You're good mates. Oh well, yeah, I know, but I didn't speak to him for the first nine holes because I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he started he started taking these massive divots, and yeah. like my heart was just swooning. So. Oh my goodness! And so you spoke on the tenth, you, then. Yeah, you probably well, you probably beat me that round. I mean, that, that's eventually what I wanted to get to, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, now I've established the friendship. Can I be part of this? Great. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> you know each Oh, that's lovely, Pete. Great stuff. Yeah, it's He's bit... such a good guy, isn't he? Like, it's good, obviously, with what we're doing. Like, we managed to get around and play with uh, quite a lot of players. Yeah. And honestly, he's like one of the nicest. Uh, so yeah. Nice. I remember going to the Ned Bank in South Africa and uh, we got we we're on the plane together going over and yeah just got so much time for everybody literally um, it gives back to the game as well this is a this is pretty cool isn't it here on the range now uh, the weather's cleared yeah we're just getting these goodness, little pockets so aren't we it's so different isn't it it's now I mean compared to what it was literally five minutes ago like this is I, I actually fancy going out to play now yeah I, I was do. fancying going home five minutes ago now Noni and Iona and Incy spoke to Bryson earlier <laughs> and about uh, he's trying he was talking to them and saying that he's trying to reduce his ball speed Mark Rowe alluded to the fact that it was 191 miles per hour have you ever heard of a player trying to reduce their ball speed um no no that is you know I can I, I speak I, to Mark I, I, actually I is he I there in the comms no box was it about that. Mark was it 191 yeah it was 191 he was talking about and he was saying that they must reshape the driver faces he wants more curvature on the club face because he wants to get better control at 191 and what I said to Simon was I'm having exactly the same problem <laughs> <laughs> don't quite believe that curved cl- club face uh, yeah, uh, listen, we, we all know that Bryson does come out with some funny things every now and again. Yeah, okay, I, think, okay. I think this might be the latest. We'll go, we'll go and try and have another chat with him. Let's get back to you, Rowie, and uh, see what's happening up there. You've got a bird's eye view. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we look there at a Turnbury Open champion, of course, Pippin Tom Watson. There he is, Stuart Sink, studying. Do you know it's interesting, when Stuart Sink won that Open Championship, I did feel just a little sorry for him because I think everybody in the entire world did want Tom Watson to win that one. I've never forgiven him for it. Absolutely, definitely not forgiven him for it. He's ruined the Cinderella story, and that's the end of that. So, Stuart Sink analysing some numbers with his team. Teams, are, everybody's got teams. You know what? You know I, what? Yeah. I was on Good. the golf course at 17 earlier on today having a look at that new par three, the little eye as it's called, fascinating little hole. You're going to see a lot of that this week. And at one point on the green, I counted 17 people. 17 people on yeah. the green. It's amazing. 
it's like all of the big players have their all big teams and they're all here because this is the biggest one of all. So Stuart Sink looks as though he's just packing up for the day. I think that's his, da his daughter who's just doing a bit of caddy. He has had his son on the bag. He was on his son was on the bag for the big wins. So let's see who we got. The work continues. Bryson working still, hard. I'm going to say still hit, hitting drivers. Yeah. Is he still hitting drivers or is that? A, he just a loves it, doesn't three. he? I think that's actually down on the ground. I think that's a three where he's hitting now. Yeah, Alex Noren pounding. It's a good looking series of actions. Harris English. Very down on well the end. Matthew Jordan there. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Harris English. Coached, if we can see, by Mark Blackburn. So Mike Walker alongside yeah. there. Peter Cowan and Mike Walker work very closely together. Matthew yeah, Jordan Mike. hitting the first tee shot tomorrow. I know. Mike, it's a good that's a very good person for him to talk to. Mike Walker is very level. There are no ripples. No, on simple. The, simple. Yeah. No Mike is Mike is simple. Peter is complicated. That's the way it is. That's that's, yeah. I, Mike Walker's, like the work that he's done with Matt, Matt Fitzpatrick is pretty remarkable. That's like really taking someone on their whole journey. So that's a big accomplishment. Not many people can do that. Mike's done it a couple of times. So he puts himself in sort of like a pretty great coach status. Yeah, I yeah think great that's coach. Right. I mean, you just got to be, you've got to look at guys. You know, coaching, Simon, is a performance driven business. It's like, you know, everybody can go around and call themselves a coach. The question is, who have you worked with? Did he improve? And where mm. did he get to? And yeah. I'm sorry to say that is, you're a coach, you're a great coach as well, but you've worked with players, you've made players better. There's a big difference between saying I'm a coach and actually doing the work and improving someone. So, well, there's all sorts of coaches. So, with a f open golfer, champion golfer of the year, Stuart Sink, is with Di Stewart. He certainly is. Stuart, great to see you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. Great stuff. Um, you've been on the range with, uh, who have you been with? I've been with my caddy and my spouse, yeah. Lisa. Great stuff. <laughs> How are you feeling coming here? I mean, 2009, wasn't it? So that's 14 years I'm ago. Really great memories. Great memories. And it doesn't feel like 14 years ago. So no. um, I'm upset Looking with you. fresh, by the way. Well, thanks. I'm upset <laughs> with you for reminding me how long it's been. <laughs> it, it does feel like yesterday, a lot of the memories. Uh, I love coming back and playing over here. Um, it's a different kind of golf than we're used to. It goes without saying. Yeah. But it's so fun and different kind of challenge and yeah, great memories. That's what everyone's saying. I mean, it's the creativity, the imagination you need around a Lynx course. It's, it's like no other challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a different game almost. Yeah. You know, we play golf all year round and then we come over here and play Lynx golf and it's, it's kind of like a different version yeah. of, of itself. And uh, you have to be prepared. And it's really the only way to get prepared is by doing it. There's just no way for, no way to read up on it. There's no way to talk to somebody and figure it out. You just kind of come do it. And, years and years helps but um, it's still a puzzle that we all enjoy trying to figure out yeah. how, how does it feel coming back to an open champ an open championship as a former champion does it change the week at all for you it doesn't change the week but right when you first get inside and check in at the registration desk you know you go around the corner to the locker room and you have your own little corner the champions corner which is always a nice reminder and good company in there so it's an exclusive area it's an exclusive. Yeah. who's, yeah. who's, there, with, who's there with you in the it's corner it's not like a combination lock on the door or anything <laughs> right. it's just a nice case opening but it's it's awesome. it is nice it's a good reminder you know to be in there with the champions that are, are playing and um you know the defending champion and some of the young guys like uh yeah. like the the guy that won the amateur championship christian christo lamprecht who's a yes. south Six african who, who goes to georgia tech where i went and I see him at practice all the time because I practice at their facility. Oh, mate, what yeah. do you make of his game? Yeah, he's amazing. He's six eight. He's way taller than I am, even. I know. I, I literally couldn't believe. It. I was like, wow, yeah. you are. You know, he's how big. Tall and are you? I'm oh. six four. Six four. So I'm okay. one of the tallest really out short, here. Short, actually. Completely. I'm short. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's uh, but it's good to see some of the young guys too. And they get to mix it in with you know, open winners from the past and and start their uh, journey in this. Great event. Yeah, I, I spoke to Alex Maguire, um, and his dad Sean was here. Sean started crying actually on the range because Alex qualified a couple of weeks ago, and he, he's in the locker room and he's got uh, Rory McIlroy on one side and Shane Lauer on the other. So just brilliant for these young guys. But um, in terms of your game, how, how are you feeling about it right now? 
Well, it hasn't been the best year results-wise, but I feel like I've um, I've worked hard and I'm I know I'm doing the right things. Yeah. But golf doesn't always pay you off in results. I mean, it takes oh. a lot of patience yeah. and you just have to keep on plugging and um, have a good attitude and and put your best foot forward every day. And you, you never know when that little you know the top is going to pop off. Yeah. And it could be this week. It'd be awesome. I love playing here. Yeah. Uh, who's on the back for you this week? My wife. My wife, Lisa Caddies. She's been caddying for a few months. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's fun. How's that relationship? Do you ever, it, it always goes well on the golf course, does it? Well, it's, I think it's actually helped our relationship off the course. Has it? Caddy, her caddying, yeah. Um, it's hard to explain why, but I think her being on the inside of things and understanding what we go through day in and day out is really uh, been helpful to our relationship. And, and so, um, well, I can't fire her. So, uh, can she, she fire you? She can fire me, and she'll yeah. be on the bag until she says she's done. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. This is, I want to know, actually, from all our viewers, if anyone, you know, if you can, if your partner. That, that's been really interesting. And how's your relationship going? Because it's going great on the course and off the course. Stuart, thanks so much for your time. Uh, you uh, what time are you off on Thursday? I'm at 8.03 a.m. Okay, so. do you, do you, who are you playing with? I'm playing with two of my young American friends, Trey Mullinax and JT Posty. Excellent. <laughs> An early start for you. Early start. Uh, best of luck. Bowl of porridge, off you go. You got it. Thanks. Great stuff. Take care. Right. Thanks, buddy. Thank Good you. Luck. Great Thank to speak you. to Stuart. Uh, memories, of course, from Turnbury. Um, I love the fact that his, his wife caddies for him and they have a, a better relationship off the golf course. Yeah, and you know what? I think he actually meant it. It didn't sound forced at all. No. Which is an exceptional feat. It's very unusual. I seriously want to know from our viewers uh, what, what you think about that and if you have that relationship with your partner as we look down at the road. Pete, let's go for a walk. Let's go oh, down here and see what's happening. Have you had a, a good day so far? I've not seen you for a few hours. Well, yeah, Where have you been? You've been managed, slacking massively. <laughs> I actually managed I to get a wander. I know what Pete's been doing. Yeah, I actually managed to get a wander out onto the golf course, which was, which was nice. It was good yeah. to see it. Um, in full open championship condition. Yes, I, I walked nine holes and it was brutal. My mm. goodness, I had, I've still got all my layers. I'm starting to get a little bit hot now. This is, this is the problem, isn't it? Sometimes you never know how many layers to wear. Uh, but the rain has completely stopped. But it was, it was a howling wind out there, and it's, it's completely died down now. Play is still coming out onto the range. Uh, we've got some spectators in the grandstands who we'll speak to very shortly but for now i think we'll take a little break we'll see you in a minute Scenes from the driving range. All day long they've been at it. Bryson DeChambeau is there, just on the left. So, yeah, it takes all shapes and sizes. Golf, oh, that is a very little golfer. That's, that's here, that is here. That, that is the clubhouse. What a and swing. That is a great action. Oh, this is just a little me. bubble. Look at that. Oh, body English. Swing's incredible. That is amazing, How isn't old? it? Three years old? Three or four. Nearly took it out. He's grown, hasn't he, now? He's 27 years old. Matt Jordan, local hero. And... 24 years later. Yeah. And... Has he got any better? 
I don't think you can beat that swing we no, just that saw. That's pretty cool. But you know what he's going to do on Thursday morning? He will lead out the guys for the 151st Open. That is the man who will tee off first. That's his home golf club. I mean, that where, does it get better than golf that? Course. It does doesn't. it get better? It doesn't. Do we think the RNA can organise a golf event? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I'll tell you something. He's a good player. He's a great player. And he's going to win very, very soon. Yeah, he had a good victory on the Challenge Tour. That wasn't too long ago. So just creaking up. You've got a trampoline through the stages, haven't you? You've got to pass the first test, get your card, pass the next test. He won the, what did he win? He won the Italian Open in 2019 in the playoff. Um, so that was his first breakthrough victory. He's played the Open before, qualified, and now under the watchful eye of our buddy, Mr. Mike Walker who knows a thing or two about taking young talent and growing it and developing it and making it into champions. What do we think of this action? Some See, power in that body. Yeah, it's a modern Mark. swing, isn't it? It's a modern swing. Look, look at how strong his legs are. Look, you, you know, he does, he does the physical work in the gym, you can tell. You look how strong he is through his core. And it's different to some of the other swings we've seen today. You know, we saw Rasmus earlier with that very slow, smooth, rhythmical, long, languid swing. And now we see somebody who's got a really sort of powerful, what, what I call a, a modern golfer's swing, Simon. Yeah, the game's changed, you know. The, now we have really some of the best athletes in the world who play golf. You know, before it was, might have been a case of, well, you're not really fast enough for soccer. You're not really big enough for rugby. You're not fast enough for athletics. But you could try golf. And now the game has changed. Power. Tiger Woods changed it. Nick Fowler was very fit and strong. It's like a like a rower. Wasn't and big. It? And big. You don't realise till you see no. Sir Nick. Didn't and you? it's Sir Nick's birthday today. So we'd just yep. like to say happy birthday to Sir Nick wherever uh, you are. How old? You'll know. I don't. Oh, you're going to check know. it. You're going to check that anyway. I'm, happy birthday, I don't Sir know Nick. But he's a big guy. You stand next to Nick and he makes you feel very small indeed. Physicality yeah. immense. Yeah, and he used that to his to his advantage. And, he, and, and, and blue eyes, Nick Faldo. Blue eyes. I never really that looked can, that closely into that his can, eyes to realise they I know, were blue. I, mine, I can only tell you because I've had them staring at me going, what are we going to do now about my swing, my shots? So, Sir Nick Faldo. 66 years old today. Yeah, click it, he click, well July. done. Yeah, he's aged well. Oh, so he's, Nick, he's, he aged has, well. He's, he's, a, he's a very focused bloke, Nick Faldo. So anyway, here we go. Matt Jordan, what do we think about this? It's just, it's like an athlete swing in a golf club, isn't it? Well, there's it? no speed in the takeaway, is there? It's just such a, a slow coil to a nice position, and then it, it explodes, doesn't it? Yeah. 71 like ball it. speed. Yeah, that's that's about the right number. We were talking, and um, Bryson DeChambeau was complaining about his just toning it down to 191 miles an hour ball speed. So just working on his swing a little bit. Is, the, is it this field? So if I have this field, do I do that? Or what should I do now? So stretching it out, elasticity. We've got ball speed there, we've got yeah. flat carry 279, we've got the data, we've got the apex. What would his club head speed be? About 113, 114 to generate so, that amount? Yeah, I think, you know, it's probably maybe a little bit quicker. So let's suppose you have like the optimized smash, um, smash factor. So, um, you know, let's suppose you go for one, one sort of 70, um, you know, you're, you're looking at 170 is a kind of like a 113, one, well, let's call it a 113 uh, club head speed. So that's just around the PGA Tour's average, I would say. Um, and you'd want to probably be working into having a little bit longer. But I mean, that's nice, quite quite nice to have on a, on a cold day, 296 yards of carry, isn't it? 10 degrees of launch, nice apex. But you've got 171 there, you've gone up to 173, uh, and obviously the flat carries picked up um, a mile an hour of, of, of 
club head speed equates to what Simon another yeah. five or six yards or something yeah, or? it depends on the hit the strike the launch the spin but let's suppose yeah like two two and a half yards something like that so again 172 just moving it through its paces I only ask you all these things because I know you know the answers and then I feel like I'm talking to Albert Einstein oh yeah I mean I think I might be pulling a rug over your eyes there but anyway so here we go Roe so let's have a look at this so it loads pretty nicely, quite straight arms. It looks a bit stiff there. I mean, it looks as though he's trying to whack it, doesn't he? And then load and bounce. It's it's not a it's, it's interesting because it's not a soft posture. We certainly wouldn't. So no, it's rigid, yeah, isn't that's it? What it's I like, say. it's not like a bloke yeah. who's going to do yeah. something hard. Yeah, correct. correct. Rasmus looks as though he's just going to just go. like. Yeah. I prefer Ooh. I prefer the other way. Yeah. Around. I prefer the kind of super relaxed yeah. posture where you're not really sure, and then all of a sudden it flows and it's smooth and it's lazy power. But of course, yeah, it's different tensions. I I like yeah. that. So Mike Walker just talking a little bit about locking it out there getting the right tilts just calming his man down so we're enjoying down on the range here watching young matthew jordan who will hit the first tee shot tomorrow morning uh, sorry on thursday morning in the open championship and alongside him is coach mike walker who's been up and down that range i think since about seven o'clock this morning yeah, without yeah. a break he hasn't had a cup of tea or a kit cat he's just been working 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 yeah it's getting your man ready for the task so in not long he will stand on the first tee and he will be announced and it will be welcome ladies and gentlemen to the 151st open championship at royal liverpool on the tee from royal liverpool matt jordan and then his heart will go to about 170 beats per minute which will match nicely his club head speed Curious, wouldn't it, to have a, a heart rate monitor on on some of the players at certain situations? I think you're right. His heart, his heart rate will go up quite a bit oh, on that yeah. first I, tee. I think if you you talk to players and you know in, at an event like this, it's quite chatty. It's quite chatty now, but it starts to get that sort of awkward silence on Sunday on, 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 on Thursday morning the driving range doesn't look anything like this heads are down it's difficult to get a word out of your player it's a different thing and what that is that is just tension and it's tension because it's it matters so much so well you want to get off to a good start don't you that's the thing you yeah. do not want to get you think off to it's a bad a, start do you think it's an easy hole to start on it's well, not a shot you'd fancy, really, is no, it? No, no, there's an out of bounds there. I mean, any time I see an out of bounds, you know, no, but it's always a bit nervous. Where, like where would you like, I mean, the first hole at St Andrews, you, you look at that and you say, OK, listen, I could, no matter how nervous, I could, I can punch a six iron down there. But, I mean, the f I think the first hole here is very intimidating. I agree with you totally. I think, you know, wide open fairways like St Andrews there are actually sometimes a little harder because you need to focus on a point, otherwise yeah. you get lazy. Yeah. You mentally switch off. Yeah, but well, the guys just hit it at the bridge, the Swilkin Bridge, and hit sort of a, a six iron. So, angles, and then you can see really what we call like leveraging the ground. So you looks, kind of looks got good like from that angle. I like it from that yeah, angle I, very much. I like this. I think there's a little bit of glide in there, which is kind of like that lateral movement onto the front leg. I think that's what Mike's telling him. So like compress into that left side. And then once the weight's starting there, you start to have a combination of a rotation of your hips. And then you're pushing up through that left leg to kind of stop that rotation and get into a vertical. And then you get the snap. So he's looking at our scoreboard, which tells us, tells the, the viewers out there all about the shot that he's hit. So you can just see as they walk across there, up the left side of the driving range, you might have two or three guys. And so you might be thinking that Bryson DeChambeau's numbers are there. Bryson DeChambeau's numbers might be up there. And he'd be thinking, has Bryson just hit it 190? He hasn't just hit Is that a mistake? So has he got 
330 yards of carry and then you hit one and you go 287 and you go are we are we playing the same game so here we go what do you think Rory 173 ball speed puts in a bit extra effort here 170 stable and slightly hooked Nineteen feet of curve. Hang time six point four seconds. Yeah, these are low shots. That's a that's a that's a link shot. Ninety feet of apex is kind of a lynx shot. Yeah, the, it, the, yeah. Then that's what he'll be practicing. He'll be he'll be thinking about the conditions, how they're going to be. He'll be, he'll be thinking about shots. the first tee shot on not Thursday. Yet. It's not. Oh, yet. he will. He'll go before he goes to bed. He'll be thinking. God, hope I hit a good one and if, when he wakes up in the morning he'll be thinking the same thing it'll be early by and, he'll, the way. and he'll have had a load of thoughts about it in between the, you know we think they're so calm they're just like us they're just amazing at golf but they stress like we stress you yes. you've won on the you've won on the on the world of golf scenes Lancome trophy Do with an amazing that? field that. Do you know Amazing field. Lancome uh, Trophy, 1992. Amazing. Yeah, amazing field. Down on the range on Wednesday, hitting it rubbish. Yes. Simon Holmes oh, walks right. by, 10 minutes, gives me a little lesson, tells me about the fact that I'm a bit disconnected and slow my bottom half down and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Keep blah, blah, blah. Apart. And I went on and won, and I thought about your tip oh, the whole my. week. Keep your knees apart. Keep we my knees apart. Oh, you my. said, I feel like you've got a that? beach ball between oh. my knees and it slowed my hips there must be down. Wrong. There must be something wrong with us. That we I couldn't have won it without that. you. Oh, bless you. So, it's interesting, isn't it? Feedback. Couldn't the do that. I, I, yeah, but I, you know, I have to say, you know, like speaking to Dane Laura Davis earlier at lunch, and she's the same as me. I can't do this. I can't do this technology stuff. Numbers don't mean anything to me. I just looked at the ball flight and, and felt the shape, and, and I, you know, I knew how far I hit each club, and I, you know, this honestly would, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not embarrassed to say it would confuse me, not help me. Um, it's interesting. You have to use it in the right way. So what you've got to do is you've got to use it to help you. It's only feedback. It's only validating a thought you might have had, something you're working on. What you don't want to let it do, and that's probably true with all technology, you don't want to let te technology control your life. You know, you can easily live in our world with your head down the whole time staring at your phone and the whole of the world's happening right in front of you if you just look up so it is a f it is a blend Matt Jordan the reason we're looking at him is because he's going to have an amazing honor on Thursday morning as the local boy one seven three gave it a little extra pop and then lost it right so it did not keep the sequence going there if he can increase the speed and not damage the sequence so a little bit extra hip turn see him like ramping up the tension legs getting braced he looks like he's braced ready to do something doesn't he brace and pump good shot <laughs> 280 carry little fade shot with some run out we were looking at his swing I mean how old is he here four a little longer <laughs> look at that and the bounce oh yes the leg the lower body action is very similar isn't it oh magic Absolutely magic. Yeah, if you've got kids, get them playing golf as soon as you can. Just lost left a little bit. Interesting. 
interesting to see closing scenes on the driving range. There's your local hero. Just working out what's going on. Harris English. Work down the line, Mark. It's almost like the range just got another lease of life, isn't it? Guys well, coming of course, because it stopped course. raining. They've yeah. all been waiting for it to stop. And Bryson back is out. still smacking drivers. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Rasmus and Nikolai. Nikolai Hoygaard, his brother was here earlier. No, Soren Hansen. Tag teaming, tag yeah. teaming the twins, doing it's working with them both there. Look, yeah. family business. Yeah, just so that. just working a little bit maybe Ooh. on that left arm See rotation. The little tuck of up. the little tuck of the shirt on yeah. the left armpit, which you will now explain. Yep. So what you're trying to do is maybe not catch too much initial rotation on that left arm. The club can get behind you. So just feeling, if you imagine sort of where your left elbow is in your backswing, you want to have your left elbow facing a little bit more down to the ground and not rotating over. So, interesting to see. Didn't like that last shot, just working on a feel. So that left arm there, left arm, once it's there, so just links it up, pops that little T-shirt under there, like it is. Got a little glove under his arm. Kind of a connection drill sequence. Definitely got a different action than his brother. Definitely got a different temper than his brother. Just getting stuck under it and hating it. I wonder if it's difficult. If your twin, if your twin's doing a, a, on a on a different pace than you, is that a is that a hard thing to get your head round? Brother and sister combinations, brother brother combinations, sibling combinations on the, in the world of golf. Who we got? Who can you think? Min Woo Lee, Min Ji Lee. <coughs> So, nice relaxed posture, a little bit quicker than Rasmus. Not quite such a good backswing as Rasmus. Not quite got that arm structure organized there. Maybe that's a hair more laid off, which just creates a little bit more shape. Aiming sticks are the solution to everything in golf. You've got to get your lines. It's always difficult. You come to a new range and you kind of can't get your optics organized. So really specifically pick something so oh that's beautiful look at that so Rasmus was on the left side hitting to the right Nikolai out on the right side hitting left all this brought to you by Top Tracer Technology which is absolute it's revolutionized for me golf it was like one of those games where you, every, you hit the ball and then we had to wait for the commentator to sort of find it. Now, with the ball tracing technologies, we are really, we, you can see the anticipations build. I think it's one of the, the, the technologies that made watching golf at home better than anything else. Yeah, couldn't agree more. It's, it's fascinating. And uh, as Simon was saying earlier, the interesting thing about Trackman technology is it should authenticate what the coaches are saying. So we'll leave Nikolai here grinding away and George is out on the course and he's caught up with Justin Rose. Okay guys, we've made it all the way out to the 11th hole. Certainly the farthest part on this course. And look who we've got here. None other than Justin Rose and his team. Gentlemen, hello, how are you? Good, you? Very good. Nice to be way out here on the 11th. Uh, quite a long way from home, but you've got a clear spot on the weather. No, this is nice. I actually was going to stop at number nine, but yeah, like you said, the weather seemed to perk up a little bit. It got really quiet out here, not many people on the golf course. So yeah, it seemed, seemed like a good opportunity to play a few more holes. How nice is it to have an Open Championship once again in the English region? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, listen, they're good wherever they are, but a little bit close to home never hurts. Uh, yeah, I was able to spend a couple of days up here about two weeks ago. 
um, which was very good prep and um, we had some nice sort of 15, 20 mile an hour winds out the west. So today is also blown out the south, so I haven't really seen this wind direction, which is another good reason to play a few more holes. Nice. Well, let's talk about that wind direction as I make my way round, and yeah. I'm sure you've done the maths on this hole, but traditionally all week it's been humming over our left shoulder, going yeah, this yeah, way, yeah. and this is the first hole where you turn and the wind's kind of behind you, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like the contours of a lot of these holes, um, 11, 12, 14, they're all left to right as well, which gets accentuated by the wind. So if it is a westerly wind, you do have to sort of hit some nice tight hold up draws. But um, yeah, today uh, we're thinking there's a hump that you can either play short of or get it up and over. I'm probably gonna try and hit the low two iron and just see if it scrambles up over the hill. All right, let's see in an action. Caddy, you happy with that? Love it. Love it? A lot of two irons this week, isn't there? A lot of two irons. Bingo. Something like that, Justin? That is about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll find it. There we go. It's quite tranquil out here, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. Lovely Pretty spot. Cool. I think everyone's enjoying it. Now, mate, you've had a good few years. What would it mean to, to be in contention once again in an Open Championship? I know it's so dear to your heart, this, this major championship in particular. Yeah, um, listen, I'm 43 coming up any day now. So, um, you know, you, you hope there's a few chances there but there's not like decades of chances so you know <laughs> listen if you do get yourself on the leaderboard it would be a situation that you'd want to make the most of and give it you know give it everything you got so yeah just to feel the the support and the, the cheers for a of the open crowd no matter who you are if you're American no matter if you're European it's a little bit louder maybe if you're English or British you'd hope so but the crowds are amazing here no matter who you are but to kind of to feel that to feel that vibe down the stretch would be amazing. Mm. I'm sure this crowd will get behind you, won't we, guys? We'll get behind Justin. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> all right, mate, we'll leave you to it. It's a Thanks. great day for a walk and a little stroll, good so good luck and all the best. Thank you, mate. Well, the fact you dragged yourself all the way out to 11, the least I could do was have a little chat. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'd come out here any day. Come I'll on. walk a few more holes with you. Come on, then. Right. Oh, I need you, you need your towel. Here, let me clean that for you. Oh, yeah, do let, me, let me finish my job. <laughs> That's a nice club. What are you doing on Thursday? <laughs> Got a new job, guys. <laughs> oh, that's a very young Tiger Woods, Robert Lee. Yeah, it sure is. This was Justin Rose as an Am Burkdale. Amazing finish. The finish. He must Looks have thought Open Championships were easy then. Oh, and and golf was easy. Look at that. Look at these youths. Look oh, at Rory. These are our, and Matt Fitzpatrick. All silver medal winners. Yeah. We have got six amateurs competing for that this year. And we were looking at Christo Lamprecht, who is from South Africa, who is six foot eight and mashes it, Robert. Yep. He can go plus 200 miles an hour with his ball speed. That's long. That's long. There was another one, Tiger Christensen, who's very, very good. Jose Luis Ballestero Barrio, Harrison Crow, Mateo Fernandez de Oliveira. The, the, the Latins have got amazing names, haven't they? Christo Lamprecht and Alex Maguire from Ireland. You see, Mateo Fernandez de Oliveira, that, that is a Formula One racing driver. It is, All I day agree. long. Yeah, I agree. All day long. That's a magnificent name, isn't it? Magnificent. So. Roberto Di, uh, sorry, Roberto Di Vincenzo became Argentina's first and so far only of the holder of the Claret Jug in 1967 at Royal Liverpool, Rob. Yeah, the home of great champions here. If you look uh, across Amazing the pantheon champions. of people that have won, start with Bobby Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Seve Ballesteros played his last it's by Open. It's I can't let you away with that. Seve played his last open in 2014 the year that rory won and sadly missed max homer great action with mark blackburn in the cap looking down at the data 
Mark coaches a group of players. Max has been really good. Mark's an amazing coach, really good at taking the technology and the biomechanics and making a player understand what to do. Great communicator. That's a big skill in coaching. So the Homer action is all about matching up spine angle, shoulder plane and arm plane. And what tends to happen is the shoulder plane gets too flat and arm plane gets too steep. So he is just perpetually working on changing that. So probably just a little, what's 170 for Max Homer? Is that a seven iron? Maybe a clip seven iron, just a, a working through your drill seven iron over on the left side of the range. It's a different wind today because yesterday it was blowing hard off the right and today it's, if anything, it's hurting when it was blustery earlier on, hurting and very much from the left, I couldn't believe how many people were out there smashing golf balls. Yeah, it's it's weird because I remember in when Tiger won and when Rory won, especially when Rory won, no one was on. I was on the driving range. No one else was on the driving range because um, it was pumping it left to right. I mean, so those two things weren't easy. associated though, were they? No, no. I was I was Checking. on the driving range with a Seve who was desperate to make the cut and I think he missed by one and that was a shame he was amazing champion Seve so sadly missed anyway the open the magic I take away the track moment from these guys I'm gonna take it away and let's see the coach use his eyeballs let's try that that's what I would do show yeah. me how you coach without a track man show me what you see you tell them, Rob. Yeah, that's what I, I like, I like to see. that. It would it would sort the wheat from the chaff, that's for sure. Here we go. So let's take a closer look. There's the data. So the iPad just captures a few key pointers. So I'm probably looking quite a bit on attack angle, quite a little bit on the face to path, just to make sure your shapes match up to your feels. Face to path is the key relationship that influences the spin axis, which is sort of giving you the, the tilt of the ball. So you don't really get a side spin, but you get a spin on a tilted axis. That's the data that you capture from this a bit of kit. That's what they're using it for. Or you could watch the ball flight, and that would tell you everything. Rob, you just like you're like the Grinch. You're like a you're like a technology Grinch. So don't drop it in there. Here we go. Yeah, don't, don't, oh dear, don't do that, or that. That doesn't look good. I don't see that, if if that's a feel he wants, because I don't see that move in his swing. No. Or, or maybe that's what he feels, making it stuck behind him. So, home up. Very one piece going back, isn't yeah, it? Very, very sort of one tempo beast, and then it all changes direction. So, you can see, let's see what we've got here. So. We've got some club speed, so 87. We've got an attack angle. Okay, they're working on dynamic loft. So that's working a little bit, perhaps. Oh, that's what's circled there. So that's kind of like a combination of your attack angle, your loft, your spin loft. So it could be just he's moving the ball flight down a little bit, and he's just trying to get a little bit more compression out of those shots, anticipating it's going to be windy. So an adjustment from the typical tournament play on PJ Tour to Lynx Golf. For me, the one-piece nature of his backswing, to make that work, you have to have a very smooth transition. Yeah, you've got to make sure you don't get narrow in transition, right? got to be right? so smooth in and out at the top, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you, if, you, if you lean on it and you get narrow, what happens is you get steep. So if you get steep, the launch goes up, or the launch changes, the spin goes up, and you lose control in the wind. So let's have a look, see. It is kind of an easy tempo, isn't it? It's kind of like loaded and then drives. Just getting used to maybe the Lynx turf. How's it gonna feel? He's gonna tee, one, tee up a couple of irons, see if he can just get the feel. So down on the range, forged by nature, and we join Dye Stewart. 
Thanks very much, Simon. We're just actually talking about some, some tartan trousers that a gentleman near us is wearing. In fact, Kevin, if you'd like to pan over and see the tartan trousers, it's a strong outfit. It's a strong choice, Claude. Would you ever go there? Oh, yeah. I, I lived in Scotland, so I, I, yeah, I, can, I can rock that look. <laughs> I'm sure they'd look great on you. And uh, as we wave to Bryson, who was lovely to chat to us today. Uh, but Claude Harmon III, marvellous to see you here. We've seen you here for the last sort of 48 hours. Um, how, how's your time been here at this major championship? It's been good. I think yeah. um, everybody's just trying to figure out which the rind what direction the wind's going to come from. And uh, Brooks and DJ played 18 today and it rained and they wanted to be out there because they figured that they're going to have to spend some time being out there in the rain. So. Um, typical open championship yeah brooks and dj uh, the two guys that you coach of course um are they staying in separate houses they're in separate houses uh, yeah. not far from each other they were in portugal last week i'm um, doing some practicing so uh they're they're they've got tans and they're ready to go yeah. good good mates now as well yeah. i mean it's all over social media they're friends i think they were always friends I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, i mean obviously i mean they've made the choice to go to live and um you know so they spend a lot of time together now and um yeah i mean it's it's great for me that they're playing practice rounds together. It makes my life easier. <laughs> it does. Your step count for the week is down. <laughs> Definitely makes my life easier. Does it? Yeah, no awkward phone calls or anything. But tell us, you know, we were speaking earlier about the amazing story. You know, Brooks Kepka coming back to win the US PGA Championship this year. Um, and the Netflix documentary everyone's been talking about and it sort of... Uh, going over his journey and, and what he's been through, but you've been inside. You know what's been going through his mind and what he's put himself through, his body through. Um, how proud are you of what he's achieved? Oh, I think it's been amazing. I don't think um, I don't think people realize how how catastrophic the injuries that he had were. Um, you know, I think everybody saw a side to him that you don't normally get to see um, from Brooks in that in that Netflix documentary. And you know, I think a lot of people when he said I you know, I can't compete anymore. I think a lot of people thought he was saying that from a game standpoint, but it was just his body that, that was just really not allowing him to do what it, what it did, you know, when he was the number one player in the world. And, uh, you know, we didn't work together for two years and we got back together last summer and it was, um, it was funny. He, he said to me, you know, I still feel like I can win majors. I still feel like I can be one of the best players in the world. And if I can get healthy and if I can get working on the right stuff and, um, we just kind of went back to kind of the blueprint that helped him become one of the best players in the world and win a bunch of tournaments. And I think he's 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 much healthier now. Um, his body's in much better shape. He's able to push his workouts a lot more. He he couldn't work out. He couldn't yeah. play. And for a guy like him, that's that's like oxygen. He he needs that. He needs that that competitive fire. And when he felt like he wasn't competitive, um, I think it it really took a toll on him physically and emotionally as well. Mm. I think I think by the looks of it, obviously it's been an amazing comeback in many respects. And he, I would say he has his confidence back, judging by some of the things that you say. And I mean, once you get your guys to a tournament like this, I mean, what's your, what's your role? How do you actually get them ready to compete? Well, I mean, in an ideal world, hopefully I'm not saying much. Um, I think it's a myth that I think people see our job as we're constantly telling these players what to do. A lot of the times, I'm just a second pair of eyes of they can't see themselves. You know, more so than any players that I've ever worked with, Brooks and DJ, um, when they get off with just basic fundamentals. It's not sexy, it's not glamorous right now. There's no YouTube or Instagram videos being made on grip, stance, posture, and alignment. I don't understand. But <laughs> How's that possible? Exactly. Wow. <laughs> but for those guys, with as much speed as they have, when the ball position gets out, when just the basics, what, what, what they do from a static position. Yesterday, um, Brooks's hands had just gotten a little bit further back, so the, the quality of the strike gets bad. Then he goes and starts trying to search for the quality of the strike. So we just moved his hands a little bit more forward, and things click into kind of the way that they want to so hopefully in major championship weeks you know we're not really saying a lot and and we can just kind of let them kind of do what they do and um you know just say good shot a lot yeah absolutely well <laughs> good, good shot well played Probably some of those noises oh ooh, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about about dj we've seen him down here on the range a, a couple of times what kind of frame of mind is he in and does he like this place yeah, i mean listen if he putts at all i think he would have had 
a legit chance on the back nine um, at the U.S. Open. He putted about as bad as he can putt. I think he finished last in putting for the week. He's been playing really well. Um, he holds some really good putts down in London for the live event and one that helped the team win that, which I think is important to him. And um, I think if, if he can... You just never know what this golf course and, and this tournament is going to give you. You can get on the right side of the draw, you can get on the wrong side of the draw, and I think everybody's just kind of waiting to see what the weather does. But DJ's been playing good, he's driving it good, and um, you know I think he, he's still got a lot of you know great golf left in him. He loves playing in major championships, he loves competition, and um, you know it's exciting to, to see him play yeah. well. So it's just about keeping loose, isn't it, really, and going through the same he, routine? He doesn't have a problem keeping loose, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest. But uh, I think if he can putt well this week, which, again, on these type of greens and these type of conditions, you know, that can be a little bit difficult. But um, DJ tends to, when the putter's good, his confidence tends to go up a lot. OK, so, so who out of your, your, those two players... Are your two players are you are you going for for success this yeah. week? I'm gonna say both. Yeah. Otherwise, you've got to get... choose one. <laughs> I'm not uh, choosing. Right we'll, make, we'll, we'll definitely make this easy. You got to choose somebody else outside of your stable um, who's gonna do well. I mean, if if you look at the two that that had a chance to win this golf tournament last year, um, you know the way Rory's been playing, yeah. the way he played, and then the performance that Cam Smith put in. You know, at the live event, I mean, he shot 63 one of the days and hit nine greens. I mean, wow. I've just never seen anyone. He says he's playing I just have never seen anyone be able to putt like he can it's putt. It's unbelievable, it's, isn't it? It's unbelievable. He makes so many putts. Um, you know, very similar to Jordan Spieth, and you know, I got to play. He played a practice round uh, with Brooks the other day, and I got to walk around with him and ask him about what he thinks about with his putting, and it's fascinating to to get to pick someone like his brain. He said, "Listen, I just." I really just try and think about the speed the ball's going in the hole. And when you listen to a great putter like that, it sounds so academic. Yeah, of course. Why don't we all think of that? But yeah. there's no real mechanical thoughts. He's got a very, very loose, flowy stroke. And the way that I think he approaches putting is is one of the things that makes him such a great putter. It's one of those things that... See, it does seem so simple, does it, when you think about the speed of the ball going in the hole, but that will automatically put a picture in your mind of what the line has to be as well. Right. If you want it to go at that speed, it's a great, great way to think about it. But I'm it. also fascinated by just how little technical thought mm. someone like him has. And I think that really helps him on the back nine on Sunday in big tournaments because he's not thinking about a stroke. He's not thinking about mechanics. He's actually thinking about making putts. And again, that sounds really, really sounds simple. sounds so simple, doesn't it? You know, yeah. My father is, is a very good putter with a really weird stroke. And I asked him once, what do you think about putting? And he's like, I don't understand the question. I think about making it. And he was like, are you thinking about something else? And he always said to me when I was growing up, you know, putting more than anything, there's two options. The ball's either going to go in or it's not. There's no other outcome from five feet, 10 feet, 100 feet it's either going to go in or not and I think guys like Cam Smith focus they spend so much time on trying to make putts as opposed to trying to not mm. miss them and I think that's one of the great strengths that he has but uh, I think Rory's definitely going to be one of the favorites I mean the golf that he's been playing um, I think Rory definitely looks like he's trying to prove something mm. and I just I can't I can't I'm surprised that it's been so long since he's won his last major. I mean, in 2000, was it 14? Yeah. You yeah. just would have thought by this point he would have been given his talent level and given what a, such yeah. a great player. You'd think he'd be in double digits at this point. Easily, I mean, yeah. everybody, and you wouldn't think in 2014 someone like Brooks Kepner would have more major championships than Rory McIlroy because in 2014, Brooks wasn't the player that he is today, and Rory you just would have thought would continue to go on. I mean, I think it would be great for the game. I think it would be great for golf if, if Rory can get another. He's going to win one. It's it's just a matter of when, not yes. if. Yeah. His talent is so good, and um, you know he's one of those players that um, I will stop and watch on the driving range hit golf balls for hours because yeah. it is a golf swing and the way he plays golf is, is pretty special. It is really amazing whenever he comes down here this grandstand is absolutely <laughs> packed it really is but this, speaking about the mindset of Cam Smith it, it's it's fascinating to hear what you've just said do your guys ever watch somebody like Cam and the way he putts? Do I they, think everybody watches yeah. Cam Smith putt. Do they, do they watch a lot of other they players? They shake their head when they watch okay. him putt because they just <laughs> wish they could putt like that yeah. but um, you know he's He's a singular talent, and wouldn't it be great if, if those two 
somehow managed to get Mahon in the back nine again on Sunday mm. and, and, and do what they did last year. Because I, th I thought the, the duel that those two had on the back nine yesterday, uh, or last year, was, was pretty special. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. Thanks so much for your time, Claude. It's been brilliant. Also, massive shout out to your dad, Butch, who uh, we love. And, he's, uh, he's 80 next month. Is he? He's 80 yeah. next month. But you only look about 59. He really does. There's, there's, he's fantastic. He's an absolute legend. And uh, yeah, it's a great to su support to so if, many players. If you don't believe he's a legend, just ask him. He'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, but what are you doing tomorrow and like on Thursday? I think everybody's, uh, they're going to try and, Brooks, DJ and, and Gary Woodland, they all play together today. They like playing practice rounds together. So uh, they're going to go out probably around 11 or noon and, and see what happens. Yeah, great stuff. Oh, thank you. you. We'll hopefully speak to you again. Thanks, buddy. Great stuff. Let's head to the open zone. A Henny is there with a celebrity Henny. If you start singing, then I'm in a private concert here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very happy to be joined by Niall Horan here Hello. in the Good Open you, Zone. Annie. Thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, you have Modest Golf Management, mm -hmm. which has got Tyrrell Hatton, who is down there yes. on the range, Leona Maguire, who Indeed. is doing incredible things. Um, how much time do you get to play golf yourself? Oh, it depends what's going on. Uh, when I'm on tour, I play a lot, but when I'm kind of in promotional you know, album cycle, I don't get to play as much as I'd like to. I play off eight, and I think I'll be playing off something like that for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. We can all uh, understand that yeah. one. Um, when you are on tour, do you travel with the clubs? Do you research places that you want to play? How does that go? Oh, yeah, for sure. When we're on tour, I'm trying to play most days. The clubs go everywhere. Most They're under, under the tour bus, uh, depending on what city I'm in. I'll see what courses are around there. Most of the tour gets booked around golf, to be honest with you. I That's love not that. even a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Dedication to the game. All right, we are going to get you to take on our all club challenge. Right. Um, and most people have been coming in here wanting to give the hickory sticks a go. Okay. So we're going to get you to hit our hickory club. This is the first? Yeah. <laughs> a little daunted, or are you looking forward to giving them a go? I can barely hit my own, never yeah. mind the hickory. So this <laughs> might be the turnaround that you need in your golf game. What we're going to do is just get you to hit the distance one. And then we'll get you will select your weapon. Right, after. okay, okay. So if okay. you push that button. All right. Be nice, be nice, be nice. 95 oh, yards. 95, that's really nice and friendly. Okay. I'm going to hit this just anyway. Let's see what happens. That'll be interesting. Yeah. In a four iron. Oh, I thought it was going to come. Oh. Eight iron, 95. That's really friendly. It likes you. Do you think you, I can make that work? Um, you don't have to hit the. Well, this is kind of the eight iron, or you've got this six iron. To 95 yards. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm being. How nice are you being? Kind to because they're the the, the hickory okay, shafts. Okay. Okay. So you think I got so six? Then. It would be a chippy six or like a, a fuller eight. Fuller eight. Yeah. Let's do it. See what All happens. All right. Could this could go very wrong, honey? Oh, well, it could go very right. It could go very well. well. Yeah. Okay. Where do I have a particular aiming? Um. So uh, the fairway between the 250 and the crane. Yep. Wind okay. off the right a little bit. Wind off the right. First swing of the day. First swing of the day. With the hickory. Flushed. Tell you what, we're going to find the, the result. Da, 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 da. What do you feel like that went? Hundreds. In the hundreds. Hundreds, up 10, maybe. We're looking for 95. Please start slowing down. We're in the 80s, we're in the. Oh, I'll tell you what. That's pretty good. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> do you want to have another? Do you another go? Swipe? Yeah, you go ahead. I'll take a few yards off it. How did I that just feel? I can't believe I hit it. Yeah. I'm, I'm still kind of feeling this thing in my hand. Right. If you don't hit it out the centre, centre, centre dot, you no, do tend to uh, feel it. No, that's and I never hit it out the centre, so <laughs> it's not very forgiving. This thing. No. It's Let me really try not. this again. Let me try right. it again. A bit chippier. That's too much as well. And pulled. Yeah, it is downwind. We're going to get the. Oh, that's a bit um, shorter, actually. Yardage here on the club. One fourteen. I don't know my own strength. No. You, I feel like you're actually hitting this pretty good there. This could be the new thing in the bag. Hickory than... sticks on tour. I mean, we'll see what happens. I yeah. don't know what's going to happen. Niall, thank you so much thank for joining you, us. Hannah. Enjoy your week. Thank you. Doctors confirm golf is good for your physical and mental health. Oh. 
I'm here in the grandstand and overlooking the range. Actually, Kev, do you want to pan out to see this gorgeous view? It's a bird's eye view, it's brilliant. Um, some of the players down there. Uh, the end of Tuesday is almost upon us, but these fans, my goodness, they've been here for hours or minutes maybe. Tom, how long have you been here? Uh, since about 10, 10, 11 o'clock this morning. What, sat here? No, not sat no. here. No, 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 I've been here about half that hour. Would be, that would be a yeah. really long time to sit in this seat. Yeah. Um, so you've been walking the course? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, um, so, and you're a good golfer yourself? Not too bad, yeah. What do you play off, Tom? I uh, play off two. Give a shout out to your golf club. Uh, Manchester Golf Club. Great stuff, they're all watching. We know they are. Excellent. So coming to the, is this your first Open? Uh, no, I went to Birkdale in 2017. Brilliant. Is, uh, and friends? Are we friends? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, what's your name? Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Are you a golfer as well? Yeah. Great. Handicap? Uh, scratch. F uh, Manchester Golf Club as well? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And Dad, is I it? I don't play golf. <laughs> OK, well, we won't talk to you then. No, I'm joking. What's your name? Jeff. Hi, Jeff. So who are you, who are you guys supporting? Tom? Uh, Dan Bradbury. Tell us about Dan. Uh, so we play golf with his best mate from college in America. So we've uh, come to support Dan Bradbury. Excellent. Do you know his tee-off time, Thursday? I don't actually know. OK, we're going to find out for you. Excellent. Okay. Brilliant stuff. Are you? How, how excited do you get about the Open? Um, pretty excited. Yeah. Don't look it, but we're going to, do, <laughs> we're going to believe you. Yeah. Great. So listen, lads, have a great time and uh, enjoy. Are you here for a few days? Uh, no, just here. To, you're Sunday, aren't you? Sunday, Sunday, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. OK, yeah. thanks, lads. Thank you. Where have you come from? Hello, Guy. Uh, Southampton. Southampton. And uh, who are yeah, you... I originally come from here. Okay. I was born on the Wirral. Marvellous. I live in Southampton. What is it that makes the Open Championship so special? Uh, it's the best major of all. Yeah. It's the hardest one, all the conditions. Is this your first one? Uh, eighth. Eighth? Eighth. Well done. He's a big supporter. Hello, sir. What's your name? Tommy. Hi, Tommy. And how's your golf? Not very good. You're from round here, aren't you? Yes, I am. Whereabouts? Yes. I can spot <laughs> just, the accent. Just down the road. Just down the road. <laughs> Great stuff. And your name is? Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Are you a golfer, Jenny? Yes, I am. She's How? better than me. Is she better? Yeah, yeah. Of course she is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, who who are you supporting this week? I'm not sure yet. Did you I'm enjoy watching like Rory at the, at the Scottish Open on yes, Sunday when he won? But uh, I would support Darren Clark, really. It'd be oh. nice to see an old stager winning it. But. A previous Open winner, he was down on the range uh, with his coach, Pete Cowan, earlier. I think he, they were working very hard. Lovely to chat to you. Moving up here. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Hi. This is, this is a beautiful, wonderful view, isn't it? It's great. Yeah. yeah. Pick a, do you pick up... This is a great place to pick up tips, I would imagine. Yes. Parameters. Because yes. I'm trying to pick up as many tips as possible. <laughs> what do you play off? What handicap? Uh, I don't have a handicap. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you play golf at all? Uh, occasionally. OK, I'm going to move on. Um, and finally, where are you from, sir? I'm from about four miles up the road. Yeah. What's your handicap? You play golf? 15. Play 15. at Wallasey. Great. Name? Nick. Hi, Nick. And what's your name? Sophie. So, do you play golf? No, I don't. OK. But it's, it's fabulous here, isn't it? It's beautiful, really yeah. is. Have yeah. you had fish and chips? No. Uh, no, I haven't actually. I've had loads of coffee. Loads of coffee. What's your plan for, for the week? Are you here just for today? No, we're coming on Saturday as well, on moving day. But on moving day, but the practice day is brilliant, isn't it? You get it's to great, see yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, very, it's very informal. The, the players are very relaxed. Yeah. You know, and they're quite. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're amenable to chat and you know, to give autographs and things like that. It's great. I see them stopping and giving uh, children autographs and things. It's really great to see. Yeah, fabulous. Well, listen, have a wonderful rest of the day. I'm going to sit down because I've got a slight bit of cramp in my leg. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's Actually, it's I don't know if I'm going to get up. I was just saying it's an age thing, yeah, but not with you, it isn't. Thanks, Nick. I really appreciate Oh, that's very kind. <laughs> Can I just... There we go. I'm up. I'm going to just sit here. Oh, hello, lads. Where are you from? I'm Australia. Australia? No, I don't think you are. No, no. You got to get the action there. He's not from Australia. They're going to sit here and enjoy the golf. I think they might have been in the beer tent. Uh, let's get back to commentary. Excellent, well refreshed. Maybe over refreshed can easily happen. It's a dangerous spot, isn't it? Hospitality. So, there it is. 
the bird's eye view of a driving range, Rob, that's had a lot of action today. Yeah, it's been a busy day on a poor weather day with a poor wind direction and, and poor temperature. Add all those three things together, it's still been a very busy day on the range. Amazingly so. Yeah, it's, it, I think there's so much of a culture of hitting golf balls, right? It's like just a culture of working on your game. I always think of a scene from Officer and a Gentleman with Richard Gere when he's pushed a breaking point and he said, why, why aren't you going to pack in? He says, because I got nowhere else to go. And I think that's the same with these guys on the range. Oh, boy. It's a better part of the day, that's for sure. If you if you hadn't gone out there and thrashed golf balls when it was really horrid, it's actually the best part of the day. Yes, yeah, bizarre, isn't it? It's just that, just how it goes. It just you know comes in, moves across quickly, and and heads off inland. The, the little squall systems. It's it's been heavy and windy, then it's calm. So it just kind of yeah, you know. It's, it's links weather a little bit, isn't it? And the weather's always a factor at a golf course that's this exposed. That's that's the nature of it. Look see at the if, way, look at how it's set up. See if I'm if I'm got here Sunday night and I practice Monday, played played the golf course, and I've hit some balls today. On Tuesday evening, I'm ready to go. There's still the whole of Wednesday to go, and then depending on the late tea time, almost two days to go for some people. You can peak too early. This is a powerful lad. Adrian House. Strong. He's got quadzilla thighs like like the Norwegian. Hovland. Yes. Oh. And Matsuyama. Yep. That's a strong Very heavy body. of thigh, Matsuyama. So. They're strong boys. Yeah. Okay. So that's the practice drill, which is just maybe a timing. Keep your angles, keep your hips up against the wall and rotate. That's power, isn't it, Rob? Yeah. It's, he's, like, it's like a one-inch punch sort of a move. But it's he's like, one of those guys that when he plays golf on the golf course, when, when he takes a swing at it with the driver, you're thinking, OK, there's not one ounce in reserve on that one. No. He is giving it everything. So to validate that, there's our spread of drives. Look at that. Like a fireworks show. He's got the five longest but today. But the five the big fireworks. So that shows you if if 306 yeah. yards carry is in the top five, yeah. that shows you how... Wind change. Yeah. Big time. Wind change, yeah. Rory on Monday had a 338, I think, so just moving around. But there you go. There is your power hitter. Now, Bryson's been out there all day, and no DeChambeau on longest drive. So strong, isn't it? It's elegant, it's a nice straight back, nice clean lines. There's there's kind of raw animal power there yeah, in this it's like, swing. That's like an athlete. It's not, it's not an artist swing. It no. is, it is, there's a bit of brute in there, which I like. Yeah, I, I like that too, sort of. All, all, it's like, you know, boxers have kind of like very square shoulders and then, and then golfers tend to have like Davis Love kind of sloopy shoulders, you know what I mean? Like, Shoulders that go down, that move and are mobile. But, I, I think that's a. That's but like, if I'm stuck in a bar brawl, I don't oh, want Freddie. I don't want Freddie Couples alongside me. No. I want him. Yeah, you want him. I want him. I, and I think, uh, who's your who's your who's your top dog? Is that is that Bro is that Brooks? I, a street fighter. Yeah, Brooks would be fairly handy. I would say. I, I think he's very heavy of hand. Brooks kept going. Yeah. I think one of those yeah. catching the side of the head. Now here we go with the driver. So we're going to see. Practice. Well, we're going to see. He's got to get over 306 to get in the top five. Here we go. Okay. Let's hope he puts a bit of effort in. Oh. See, I told you, there's yeah, not I one know. ounce left. Look at that thing. It's gone off like a missile. 185 of MPH on the ball. Top 90. five. A new top five, Simon. There you go. Yes. And that was a low ball flight. When yeah. he gets a bit more oh, underneath yeah. that ball, that's well, I think going the, further. That's, that's his links. That's his link shot. 
99 of Apex. I wouldn't want my finger trapped between the club face and the ball on this one. No, nothing. No. You wouldn't want to be the ball. No, no. I wouldn't want to be uh, anywhere near that thing. Oh, there you go. Have that. See, now it's a little higher, a bit yeah. more fade. Yeah. It should stay up in the air a little bit longer. No. Lost that a little bit. What you can't tell from here you, is whereabouts on the face he caught it. And that can, in the end of, of a 300 yard flight, yeah, make, yeah. make it 10 or 15 yards comfortably. Yeah, maybe a little low in the heel is going to give you a cut shot, a little high on the toe is going to give you kind of a, a, a push draw. So, powerful set of legs, isn't it? A good, strong, big base, 184 of ball speed giving 289 of carry. I would say probably, what would you say is normal? Is a 115 apex? He, do, he does normally hit it quite high. And when he hits his long lines, he doesn't really hit the ground. Well, he's pegged this one up just a bit higher yeah. now. So he's, he's going to catch this a bit more in the up. So and generally speaking, when you want to hit it longer, yeah. you hit it more in the up. Yeah, more in the up. Higher launch, less spin. It does look like he's trying, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hammered down the left-hand side. The baby fade. 307 again, hammered it. Yeah, impressive. There's something um, that I love about this, watch, watching top pros, you know, giving it the full beans on the, on the range. There's something very appealing about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's not in a in a long driver's type of way because there's control in it. Oh yeah. You know look that 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 guy is, is not just a smasher because he's no. got to be able to play golf. Yeah. The high fade. At three ten. So. That's just confirmation. We knew he was long, and he remains the, the longest player of the day. Yeah, we 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 we, we knew we were going to see big move through the ball so new driver he also sees all of the stats so he might have seen on the massive scoreboard that runs down the left how you far are you simon from this sort of club head speed yourself? oh so i can tell you so i know this so i have like 105 of club head speed right. i catch it right around a one just over one just under 160 of ball oh, speed now come on Give, um, give respect to that effort there. That's massive, isn't it? My, my carry he nearly is, came out of his shoes, Simon, hitting yeah, that. Yeah, 250 would, yeah. is... If, well, if I'm on the golf course, my carry's right around, like, 250, just maybe a little bit more than that. That's what I got. Um, but it's amazing. I have a son, Max, who is 16. He's, I'm very tall. He's a little bit taller than me. And he's got 114 club head speed. Well, that's, is, that's because the youngsters these days grow up jumping out of their shoes yeah. from when they're two years of age. Yeah. That, that's why that is. Yeah. It's, it's effectively speed training from yeah, a young it age. Is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter where you catch it on the face so much no. with these big drivers, so you can afford to fly at it. Yeah, my son Alfie is the same. It's amazing. Look amazing. I'm, I'm miles behind him. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. liking this. Look, everyone has 86. faded. Everyone has faded 10 feet, 15 feet. Tremendous driving. Yeah. So that's just very impressive, isn't it? Mm. Just moving around. Tee shots are going to be crucial. So we are going to see a lot of guys working the tee shots. It's going to be interesting. You, you've had a few chance to walk on the golf course as well, Rob, I yeah. know. And it's a different animal than the 14 course that we saw, isn't it? The greens are a bit different, the shaping of the greens. Yeah, there's been some subtle changes and some, you know, the last four holes really is going to make the make or break the tournament here with the two par fives and little eye, the 17th hole, which mm. has got very differing views. It depends who you talk to. Mm. Some don't like it and some think it, it's it's a, an interesting test, you know, right at the end of your round. Yeah. Oh, back from the golf course grinding it out the excellent Brooks Kepka fader very steep watch watch how much divot he takes so probably the the steepest of all the very best players in the world so loads and just trying to 
What he's trying to do is basically drive forward, but be open enough that the club doesn't get stuck. So he is really trying to make sure that he does not get trapped too square and draw the ball. That's yeah, the mistake shot. Yeah, but when you say steep and people at home hear that, he's not steep with his plane. He's steep because he's late. Yeah, and forward. He's, he's not like a, a, a 24 hander coming up over the top of it and getting steep that way. This is right up the back of it. Yeah. Look at the look at the consistency in the ball flight there. It's amazing. Frozen ropes, Rob. Oh. It's clean and good, isn't it? Brooks Kepka, not injured. It's amazing, isn't it? So many, the fittest guys we've ever had playing golf, and the most injuries. You know, I wonder if they just overhit. Could they overhit and overtrain? Is that a new a I, new I, problem I, I, I in modern golf? I think most golf? injuries come in the gym. I mean. Balance there, though, isn't it? Look at that pattern of balls, like throwing arrows. It's pretty effortless watching Brooks hit these. Okay, back to Brooks. Momentarily, we left him. We're back. So, so when you watch that club head, Simon, yeah. at the top of the swing, when, yeah. when it starts down, even though the hands don't come in, come in behind him, the club head does move inside. Yeah, that's right. I, that, I think that's that's, that's almost the, like the, that's the, that's the, the optimum thing yeah. if you can do that. Yeah, I think this is almost like a Hovland has got the same, you know, so it's steeper going up. Matt Fitzpatrick's got a bit of that yeah, going on. Yeah, steeper going up. And then the hands actually come out to make the shaft shallow. Bobby That's Jones, who won here in yeah. 1930, oh, did that. Amazingly. The club, club had rooted inside, but yeah. the hands and arms came out. out. That's that's the magic move. So, Brooks Kepka, does he have the feel that he wants? He's out there grinding. Having had a morning session and a game on the course, he's back out there. So talking about the heat that he puts on the ball down into the ground, working hard with Claude Harmon, Harmon who we heard from just a few minutes ago, playing with Dustin Johnson and Gary Woodland tomorrow at 11 o'clock. If you are out here, it'd be very interesting. So just have a closer look at this so shaft works up kind of outside of hands quite vertical there rob yeah but watch the head watch the hands and arms track not down inside close to his hip but watch the head track inside and then because he's out and over but the head's inside he can yeah. get so much compression on it look at that yeah that's beautiful isn't it that left arm now working there and the right side left side working up through the ball as he holds that face and creates that fade shot, so. And the hands and arms disappear around the left yeah, very, quickly exit, after, very, very, very quickly after, very quickly after impact. Hogan-esque in a way. Which all the good ball strikers do. There. He's looking good, if you ask me, for my money. Oh, 100%. Every and he's shot's got... tracking straight down yeah. the range the same way, same height, same yeah. flight, same distance. And he's a bruiser. He looks like a bruiser, doesn't he? So that wasn't so pretty. It's not. The chewing tobacco is not good. It's not a good It's look. not good. Anyway, so we're going to let that slide up on the plane. And now watch the rerouting and lag. The club is so late, but it's shallow and late and compressing. As then he, with his very strong body and now is sort of not damaged, that left side really posts up as he exits. So. It's a great action, and maybe our first glimpse at the 51 champion golfer of the year, 151st Open. Brooks Kepka would love to have his name on it. Be quite tasty to have guys like him and Rory fight it down the stretch. If you if you were teaching an amateur and you saw he you see watch his right foot action at the finish of the swing with the heel over the vertical yeah. you would say to your amateur punter yeah. you need to stay away from that you need to yeah. keep your at, at best 
have your foot vertical at the end of the yeah. swing, not going over. No. Because if an amateur gets his right foot in that position at the end, he's come over the top of it. Yeah. 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 Well, Brooks Kepka's weight shift's really interesting. I was talking to Claude about it, and it was basically like he really tries to keep the weight on the front ball of his right foot and then send it straight into his left heel. So there's no kind of um, ellipse of the club of the of the weight shift working left heel right toe that would be a draw pattern he's trying to work right toe left heel as fast as he can to make sure he can hold those shots up like that so brooks because morning session that looks like left. those sticks you put in those those sort of potpourri thing the little the liquid oh scent. You very know, that's, good that's Rob. what that looks like it's got a little japanese feel to it that you know when you want to make your house smelling nice and you've got the the scented oil and you put the sticks in Don't, you're not seeing that there uh, i hadn't i'm very pleased that you brought it to my attention that's though. the way my mind works so back to brooks kepka i think swiftly better than anything else here we go up on the plane the shaft is steep it's fluid isn't it it's very fluid it's like it's continuous we've seen hideki matsuyama Davis, Riley, there's a couple of guys who've kind of got like a pause, Cam Young, up. Max Homer. Pause, Homer. This is very f continuous. It's like the it, once it gets into motion, it doesn't stop. Can you see that? So watch the hips. The hips are always in flow. Load, drive, post. Right hip gets in and back behind him. Then there's the drive down. The oil of his transition yeah. is very like an old Ernie Els. Yeah, love that. That's very much the case. It's like it's just so, once it gets into motion, it goes. I'm off the scent sticks now. I'm come off that. Thank you for that. So. But it is, I agree with you. It's it, If you look at it in the hole, yeah, you don't kind of break hole. it into back and through. You're just looking at it as a hole. Yeah, the hole. One motion. Yeah. I, I, I love that. That's a good swing. So. We have been hearing from George throughout the day, and now another nugget. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We've made it to the 18th green to finish things off after another superb day here at the Open Championship. First and foremost, I'd love to say it's just been fantastic listening to you all on the range and in the commentary box. Sounds like you're having a great time across the road. Some sensational interviews. A lot of great stuff, so well done to you guys. But over here, things have quietened down. The rain is gone, most of the players have gone as well. So I thought I'd just take a little stroll up the 18th and soak up the atmosphere before things get really busy and really exciting. Imagine this, grandstands full come Sunday afternoon. This hole is a beast, especially with the wind right now slightly in two. You've got to hit your drive 300 yards to have 300 yards in. So I'm telling you right now, this ain't a walk in the park if you need to birdie the last to make a difference at the 151st Open Championship. Bunkers everywhere, we've got five of them. This pin today is relatively central and at the back, I believe on Sunday, we might just squeeze it into that corner a little bit more. But there's a long way to go till Sunday, isn't there? The big yellow scoreboard. The iconic bunkers, this is what it's all about. The Open Championship week is here. It's all happening. It's been a great day, and we've got one more practice day remaining tomorrow. These little chicken legs are getting tired. I need to put my feet up so I can give you 110% tomorrow and get a few last words from our players ahead of Championship Thursdays. Yeah, amazing. George has done a few laps, I can tell you that, and he's brought some fantastic content. Rory McIlroy was out there earlier. Justin Rose we caught up with. And as George goes to the 18th, it's a well-deserved rest. But for our last few intrepid players, including a grinding Brooks Koepka, Rob, that is, that's, those eyes mean business. Do you not get the feel for that? I think that's what he brings to every major he plays in because, you know, his... PJ Tour record for other wins other than majors, very ordinary. Yeah, just almost like using those as practice events for the big time. And he's big time. Brooks Kepka's big time. I've got to say, that golf course in Oak, uh, Oak Hill was set up like a US Open, and he just smashed it. So lower body, 
driving. That's very balanced, isn't it? That's the one that crosses over. He hates that. Hates that. So the hips stay too square on. He doesn't get open enough early enough, right? Yeah, you can see. Hands got away from him. So does he correct it? What does he do to correct it? A little bit more lag, a little bit later, bigger, bigger distance between hips and club head at impact. <coughs> Got to really be hips open. Let's have a look, see how open his hips are at impact. 30 degrees open to the target line. 45 degrees open to the target line, Robert, impact. Yeah, I can tell you he didn't like that one. He didn't like that. He should be pleased, though, with the general shape of his game, the way he's been swinging, certainly, as we've been watching him here. He should be pleased with the prep and his prospects this week. Yeah, very high standards. So, resets himself, calms himself down. Yeah, it's good. Back on track, Simon, back I th on track. I think back on track. So, do you think the number that you practice at has a, a say in what you do in the week? <laughs> you know, like the caddy numbers at yeah, the Masters and yeah, things like that? Yeah. You know, do you think, is it going to be lucky number 11? It could be lucky number 11 for Brooks Kepka. Certainly has been an unbelievably good range day. Brooks just doing final prep. Camera pans out to what is still a very, very busy range. Gallery still in attendance, just picking up a few tips for their match on Saturday or Sunday morning for a pound of sleeve of golf balls. Hardy punters up in the stands, aren't they? You know, late on here, six o'clock, it's, it's an open Tuesday, and they're, they're picking the bones out of some of the best players in the world. And why not? It's a great view. Driving range is a fantastic place to go and watch a golf tournament. You see so much action. And speaking of action, Di, you've had a good day down there. Well, I, I certainly have. And um, what's your name? Alfie. Alfie, we were talking about your trousers earlier on. Uh, we're loving very the jealous. tartan. Thank you very um, it's much. quite appropriate because you're from St Andrews. Yeah. Excellent. You've come down here to work. Yeah. Can we see the truck? Kev, have you got the trousers in? They look great. Maybe divide opinion from our viewers, but we <laughs> love them. Thank you, Alfie. Uh, you're doing a sterling job. Um, are we staying here for a second? Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, uh, I'm, it's it, they're pristine golf balls. I mean, they're so clean, aren't I'm, they? I'm kind of just waiting for everyone to look away. What? <laughs> so you can take some balls and go and hit <laughs> some balls on the range. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, don't fill your pockets, Pete. Do not okay, fill your pockets. Okay, Let's take a little walk down here. We've had a fantastic day. We've been on air since nine o'clock. We are back for live at the range, nine o'clock until uh, six. And we've loved hearing all your opinions. I've loved hearing all the different stories, the nuggets of information that we've got. We spoke to Claude Tom the third about DJ and about Brooks Kepka and how he has to balance his time between them. Uh, spoke to Stuart Singh, former champion back in 2009, how he's got his wife on the bag <laughs> and it's improved their relationship off the golf course. I love speaking to Sean Maguire and Alex Maguire yesterday, Sean, dad of Alex, who was crying because his son's playing in the Open for the first time. So many different ways to get into the Open Championship as George Harper Jr., uh, our reporter out on the course, has, mm. been, has been talking about. Pete, what's your favourite thing about, about the Open Championship? Uh, what about the Open in general? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's a too long list. We're off air shortly. <laughs> um, to be honest, I mean, doing this, like as you just alluded to yeah. there, I think Live at the Range is one of the best things it's to great. watch early in the week as well. Because access. That's the thing. We're getting access and we're chatting to people yeah. in an environment where... You know, the most, the closest people usually get is sitting in the grandstand and yeah. just like wondering what those conversations are out that are actually happening down here are. Yeah. And because we get them in a more relaxed environment before the tournament starts, like we get those nuggets of information that we wouldn't get normal. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Brooks Kepka to our left, who's uh, finishing off his practice Wednesday. My goodness, it gets a little bit more nervy, doesn't it? We're back at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. We cannot wait. The tension's building.